Go. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the very mature and sophisticated side of Garblag Games, where we're all very adult and play adult games in an adult way. Adulterly, not adulterously. Well, to each their own. Anyway, hi. Going? We're playing some June tonight, and it is the finale of our House Dargoosh introduction to June and exploration of Modiphius's new June game, which has been very, very cool. We've had lots of fun, and thank you, Nared Nixeka, for the first momentum. I'm going to need some threat as well, guys. I mean, it's all well and good giving them lots and lots of momentum, but I am going to need some threat. Otherwise, it's going to be the sandworm comes up out of the sand, kind of waves at you, and then wanders off again. Give us enough momentum, and Morgan will punch the sandworm. <laughs> <laughs> now, last week... That. My merry band of intrepid adventurers from House Dargoosh did what? Let us go to the head or the acting head of the house here on Arrakis, Mr. Dayla Dargoosh. Lewis. Oh, I thought that was the men pat. That's just, yeah. <laughs> but you're the acting head. He's the I'm actual just, head. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm just sort of here to hand out flowers. Um, Face, lost. brain. Last time, uh, we wandered about for a bit in the morning, uh, but we also received an invitation from the Harkonnen to uh, partake in the day's games, which would see us pitting. Uh, I think we joined in on the the. Definitely the team death match. I think the only one you didn't do yeah. in the end was the marksmanship one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Started off with marksmanship, but we skipped that because uh, we didn't really have anyone suitable for that. Um, there was also uh, a little bit of alliance building done with especially the Quinoa, who are our good friends now. Uh, the technological house, whose name I briefly forget, managed to beat up the hot Gunnarooks. Gunnarooks. That was fun to watch too. And they, uh, I really should have planned this in my. <laughs> <laughs> well, feel free to chip in and help him out at any time. His job is there to look pretty and wave swords around. He's doing a fabulous job. Carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Best. Um, Best waving swords about all evening. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much what I did was stand at the sidelines and shout encouragement. That was unnecessary because uh, the Dargoosh house troops led by Morgan pretty much stomped everyone a lot more than we were expecting. Inspired, obviously, by Sir yeah. Dela, uh, the um, seventh in line to the house... Yeah, you did a bang-up job, didn't you? Because you won the um, own troops and the paired troop combats, which actually puts yes. you neck and neck at the minute with the Harkonnens for overall winners. Yes, the Harkonnens were too chicken to face us in open combat. No, it wouldn't have been fair for them to stomp you into the ground because of their incredibly powerful powerfulness. That was their excuse, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Leave now we've got the... We've got the scavenger hunt now and yep. uh, the scavenger hunt and the and, tech display. Yeah. And during the scavenger hunt, we also have a little side meeting with uh, the uh, smuggler clan to meet with, with the yes. smugglers. Yeah. So we probably yeah. won't win the scavenger. <laughs> no, but it is an opportunity for a great badly. alliance of the yeah. lesser houses, which Sir Dela has been doing sterling work in. I just keep handing them knives and shaking their hands. Here's a knife. To... Nice to meet you. Here's a flower. Yeah. Nice Se to meet seems you. Seems to be going yeah. well. <laughs> yeah, have some water. Glass of wine together. Lovely. Here's a knife. Thank you very much. How are you You're doing? Gonna... Need to bring more knives next time. Mm. Luckily, you've just made friends with the knife making house. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got a knife in return. Yeah. Good plan. Good plan. And today will also be the dreaded or enjoyable sandworm hunt. Um, what else did we do? I believe... I had a conversation about tea. 
Yeah, yeah, you did. Which was completely innocent and had no subtext whatsoever. None, none at all. All of the subtext. Apart from all of the, like, this kind of... <laughs> or, or they're more subtle. <laughs> Bene Gesserit hand signals are not, like, something out of um, uh, Blue I'll Steel. Tell Marceau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Much more subtle than that. Uh, I, Millie. The sci fi channel TV series does the hand yeah. conversations beautifully. It really they was. They sit with their hands in their laps and do like sign language in their laps. To, like they're just fiddling with their fingers. It's very cleverly done. <laughs> that kind of stuff is brilliant. Okie dokie. So it was evening and you were about to embark on a scavenger hunt. Mm hmm. Now, what. Oh, you hadn't had the rules yet, had you? No. There was a light meal provided, and then you are all the houses and their their small groups of champions are summoned together. Anyone who's wishing to participate in the treasure hunt, scavenger hunt, anyway. I think we we would have participate in it. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> It does look like all of the houses have um, expressed some kind of interest and they're there with varying sizes of groups. So the oh, Kiwa have only taken a few people because they're mm. heavy troops and they're kind of expecting to rely on you a little bit. Who else had you made a deal with on the scavenger? Uh, uh, Gunnarooks. Yeah. We had an For alliance. Their eyes in the sky. All right. and yes. We're planning... We're either planning on letting the agricultural folks swoop in and win it, just to make them feel good and love us more, uh, or use them as a distraction at some point. But <laughs> we'll be participating as recce specialists and then hopefully moving off to the side a little bit for a clandestine meeting. So the Baron stands up at the head of the table where you've just shared a short afternoon meal. Honoured guests, thank you so much. Your displays this morning have been exemplary. For this afternoon's entertainment, a short scavenger hunt through the streets of Arakeen. My good friend, Count Fenring, has placed a document pouch on an unsuspecting civilian here in town. It is marked with the seal of the Imperial House. Your mission is to find and claim this pouch of documents by whatever means you deem appropriate. Conflict in the streets of Arakeen is prohibited, of course, Obviously. But a minor scuffle will not be particularly upsetting. Basically, if we just beat up the other houses now, we can run <laughs> off into the street. <laughs> I'm just Morgan. And I, I'm, I, my, 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 my mace is ready. Sir. <laughs> no, I Command me to the plan. <laughs> I mean, As alliances. Yes, honor. Yeah. Are the, um, who are the, let me come back and check my extensive notes. Are the Gunnaruks on our side? The Gunnaruks we were quite keen on the idea of using their eye in the sky technology to support you oh, because it's okay. a great way of showcasing what they can do. Sure, yeah, okay. Let now they to... realise that means they're not going to win, but they're also not going to win anyway. Mm-hmm. But if they can help someone else to win, then it possibly gets them a trade advantage or a future alliance, which is the other reason you're all here. Mm -hmm. And the Gunnaruks have seen that your guys are particularly good at scouting. Yes. And they're a little bit creeped out by the Taisheng assassins, so they're more inclined to support you. Yeah. Also, you've shown an interest in them that hasn't been acquisitional. Whereas the other houses have been like, that's nice. Can we have your stuff? I mean, we might buy their stuff later, but you know. yes, we have stuff. We can trade for stuff. Or, or we could learn things about them and sell it to other people. 
that's the second part of alliances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Certainly for house doggers. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. fascinating. Tell me more. Tell me all about your secrets. Yeah. yeah. The Baron puts his glass down and says, well, we've started. Away you go. At that point, you notice the Taisheng have already left. With a flash of silks, the jonglers dart out through the doors mm. in a chaotic motley of flashing silks and wafting perfumes. Would be terrible if they met with some sort of awful accident. Well, that's what we have the blocking force for. <laughs> The Von oh, Mir representative, the, the Nar Baron of House Von Mir, sits back down again, steeples his hands, and smiles at you. Does he? I'll wink at him. <laughs> Raise an eyebrow. As I assume our team also, well, our collective teams start leaving. Yeah, at this point, everybody's still kind of. I mean, the Kiwa aren't terribly subtle about the fact that they're kind of looking over at you and waiting for you to do something. Yeah. But the others sort of you know, take their own way out. I will deploy the scouts, sir. Good idea. If you can um, do we... liaise with the Gunnaruks for their yeah. aerial reconnaissance, that would be most useful. Do we want to... Um, second any of our team to... Any of their teams? I think it would be useful to have one of our troop with the Kiwa, just so that we can maintain contact. Mm. Who here likes? I would suggest things? that you work with the Gunnaruks. They will have some yeah. base of operation because most of their ah. skills will be with their ornithopters. I think we'll set up a command center with. Uh... The Gunrooks and the Kiwa and everyone together, the leadership to process the information as it comes in and distribute it as needed. Mm. This is going job to be for a, a, a sort of mixed conflict then. This is a combination skirmish, espionage, intrigue mm -hmm. kind of conflict. So we're gonna, I'm going to yeah. run it initially as a sort of espionage one and then we'll see how it goes from there if the espionage breaks down into skirmish then that's what happens and if it doesn't and something else happens then we go there instead okay so um, does stand ready Gretchen want to go with anyone or attach who, who is the there? the punching people one is that the uh, that would be uh, no. the, well, the Kiwa, Kiwa most likely will be our shock our troops if we need them. Force. <laughs> I I would like to punch things. But fast movers, that would be our own recon troop. You are more than welcome to join, Gretchen. Your skills would be invaluable uh, in the field. My, my move um, is, is one of my lowest skills, if I'm honest. Yeah, but you could so damn skills. With... That actually might not be a bad idea because you could hang with uh, our good friend. What's his name again? Corporal Wyoming. Corporal Wyoming, Wyoming. as he veers off slightly for a little meeting, and it might be useful to have uh, a Benny Jesuit presence for that. Okay, sure. I will accompany Wyoming and mm -hmm. uh, those troops. So okay. Dale. I What's could the plan? take so I could take some of our some of our house forces and delay, distract, or disable some of the other contestants to give a little more time to find yourself. That would be worth a shot, definitely. So yeah. Perhaps if I myself had a pouch with an imperial symbol on it, I might be able to lead them a merry chase with my cyber's foot on. And if they are chasing me, then perhaps they will not find the actual prize. I'll put a piece of paper over like, one of the Imperial seals somewhere and just 
Sketch Baker rubbing. Yeah. Oh, Baker. oh, forgery of the imperial seal is probably not a good thing. Punishable by it's not a pain. forgery. It's, is it's there, a pretty rubbing. Is there a house that has, like, I don't know, a tiger or... Because the emperor is a lion. Yeah. Is is there yeah. a house that has like a tiger or or something like that that we could go? Oh, oh yeah, no, this must happen all the time. Yeah, no, it, it's for house um, house lion-o. Um, <laughs> you're just confused. Well, I imagine I say... there probably is, and I imagine that they're probably not allowed to use a tiger yeah. anymore because ten thousand years of empire. Mm -hmm. There's only so many times you're going to accept that level of confusion before you go, no, change your animal. <laughs> I'm the emperor, you change. I would say oh. that we don't, it would only be a concern if they actually get the bag. If I am cornered, then the bag is perhaps accidentally destroyed by fire. Okay. I believe also, I could probably put I mean, my hands on a, on a seal. We can cover ourselves by making half a seal as well. It's it's a grey area. I'm just expressing um, concern over forgery of uh, the the little tiny part, the top part okay. of the. You're you're the, the you're Lion. the noble. I'm just a Venerary Jesserit. We are here to serve. Right, I mean, let's blades in the dark this. So clearly, clearly well, it's a house. You've got your plan. Lion. We're going to start it. And if you feel the need to wreck on anything, we can spend momentum to create assets and throw in things that have already happened. Okay. So you head out into Arakeen and you split up into how many units? The troop. Gretchen. Yeah. Yeah. Gretchen and Wyoming. Gretchen and Wyoming. Um, plus the recce, the rest of the recce force, but Gretchen Isaac and Wyoming are going to split nobody. off. Is Isaac going solo or is he having someone with? I think he's going solo. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, that uh, looks thick. Morgan, what's Morgan doing? Uh, I will be Join deploying the... the troops to strategic locations around the city using okay. our ancestral and historic knowledge of the environment. Teams of four squads covering each other, staying in contact through various comm links. Okay, and what's Dayla doing? Um, Dayla is gathering... No, yeah, gathering flowers. No, setting up a command headquarters with the heads of the uh, houses of our little alliance. They will filter out the information from all the groups and distribute them. So the key were hand over two of their men to each of your squads. So each of your squads has a two-man keyword heavy support. Keep up. The Gunaruks are happy to set up a mobile command center and set, dispatch ornithopters into the sky above Arakeen. They're not the only ornithopters up there, and you'd be interested to see who the others are. It does appear that there are two cohorts that have formed rather than all the houses going solo. As the houses have started to club together, so have the other half of them started to pull together mm -hmm. in an attempt to put their people in a position of power. Mm -hmm. uh, the Omora are kind of just dithering around. Or so it looks, anyway. Uh, I believe in them. Maybe. Aaron. Could you make, uh, knowing what the hell these guys are playing at, roll? So I would say um, discipline for espionage. Yeah. And uh, truth. Yep. You guys want me to spend a point of momentum? Yeah. All right. Now in letters, uh, just give um, Ben uh, some threat. So target number is 13. Uh, I rolled a 13 and a 6, which is a critical for espionage. So three successes. Oof. Okay, well, the Amora, for all of their... Lorks, my lord, I'm just a country bumpkin. 
they have teamed up with the opposition. Oh. And they've teamed up with the opposition with a bunch of bright eyed, eager and helpful young farm boys who keep pressing buttons and like turning readouts around and moving cameras. And you think you see the game that their mentor is playing here. He's letting them throw their weight behind the other houses to sabotage them rather than to support them. Ah, oh, so they're helping. Yeah, they're helping in the most stupid way possible to make everybody <laughs> misjudge them. They're going to be considered excellent. completely harmless by the other houses. They, they definitely are. Excellent. I like them. We should keep an eye yeah. on them. <laughs> They're good, but, but they it's entirely possible that the farm boys themselves the don't know mm -hmm. that that's what they're doing. They've just been told. Oh, go and help me control go on. Yeah, go on. Is there any Push way of the for Isaac to get a moment to speak with their mentat privately without being noticed? Um, he's not with them. So presumably he's out somewhere in Arakeen okay. doing his thing. Well, then Isaac would take his leave and also move out into Arakeen. And as soon as he is out of sight and surveillance, he would use his cybus hood to disguise his features and, and take on a different gait and a different way of moving and try to look more like a, one of the locals. Okay, so we're looking for some kind of move and either discipline or understand. So I would go with uh, probably, uh, I mean, definitely move with stealth. Um, as far as the drive to disguise myself, truth, since my statement is I act to control the truth. It kind of needs to be discipline or understand, really. No, because they're both skills. Oh, no, no, those are, yeah, those are stats. No, I see what you mean. Yes, it's, uh, yes, truth is fine. Okay, so move and truth. Target number is 15. I got a 10 and a three, so that's three successes. Oof. Okay, so you fade out into town. You vanish. Um, that would normally be two banked momentum, but you've only got space for one, so... Is there anything else you want to add to your... Yeah, actually, I'll spend two momentum then. Um, and as I'm moving out, create... Uh, well, I'll start um, to create an asset in that I start seeding information into the locals, cr into the crowd about the courier of the bag and subtly laying out hints that he looks like me. Very cunning. Yep, that works fine. That will give you an advantage later. Meanwhile, Gretchen mm -hmm. and Corporal Wyoming. Yes. You're heading out into Arakeen as well. Yes. Now, what, what were you attempting to do? I think we're going to um, follow our recon troops out and then lollygag a bit um, and meet up with uh, under the statue the um was it the beheaded statue of a prophet that uh yep that's right see i i paid attention i've made notes um do that this and is then... one of the beautiful things about actual plays is that it means you can watch the game back I didn't the day do that. before you play the next no, no I, didn't I didn't either but i kind of wish i had i didn't do that this week i didn't have time i was gonna <laughs> excuses excuses <laughs> do your homework do your homework um yeah under the under the statue I have a team um, for that to uh, meet up with Stitch Abby Cat. Okay, uh, yep, shortly after arriving, uh, an old lady hobbles through the marketplace and sits down near you to catch her breath. Mm -hmm. um, uh, oh, could I have had an opportunity to have acquired some apricots? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the way. Um, spend two momentum to have a couple of apricots. Uh, I will do that. Well, that's um, what, that, that, it's creating an asset. It mm -hmm. is. I created an asset. That's it's perfect, yeah. Yeah. So I have this small pouch of, of, of apricots 
Um, Do you and... know, we'll call it one momentum because it's a small pouch of apricots. It's not like a... Okay. Well, that's that's right. Right. On the rackets. <laughs> yeah. Apricots on a rack. Yeah. And they're not dry you know apricots. Where to get them from. Yeah. Not, not oh, okay. Them. Well, yeah, we'll keep it at two then if you want like fresh, squeezy, juicy apricots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as this this old old woman sits next to me, I will um I will say, Oh, my dear, you look exhausted and parched. Uh let me share something with you and I will offer her an apricot. She, she takes it from you and says, you're too kind, Sayadina. There is, there are few who show such kindness to the people of the desert in these days. Um, well, we're not in the desert now. We don't have to abide by those harsh rules. It's much easier to share here in civilization. Uh, it is the people of civilization who are not kind to the desert. The desert is kind to its own. Uh, well, um, if you would be free, perhaps you could teach me the ways of the desert. I feel I am a little unaccustomed, and and tomorrow we go out with the with the noblebornes to to search for things in the desert. Yeah, I have never been. These noblebornes they hunt Shai Hulud the god of the deep desert, and it is not a good thing to call on the power of a god. As a Sayadina, you will know this. Yeah, of course, totally. Perhaps when the menfolk go to hunt the worm, mm. you might take your own people to the place where the apricots grow, or even to plant a seed. Yes, yes. Planting seeds so that there will be more apricots in the future is definitely a very important thing to consider on Arrakis. It will not be the first time your house has planted a seed on Arrakis. No, no. House Dargusha has tried before, but I feel like we previously neglected our, our plantings. I guess it's time to come and reaffirm Sometimes our... a strong tree can grow from an old seed. Yes, yes. We should bring some water to ensure it does. You are too kind. Please take this small token and she hands you a beaded necklace. Mm -hmm. I will um, I'll put the necklace away so nobody else can see it. And then she shuffles off about her way again. With an apricot. Yum, With yum. an apricot. Seven Fremen are going to share that apricot. <laughs> Wyoming's just kind of looking at you. I will throw him an apricot and be like, come on, boy, we need to uh, find some treasure. Was that it? Was what what? The, the clandestine meeting. You had a, a conversation with an old lady about fruit. Yes. Wow. You are very, very good. Right. Treasure, yes. Now, when I was here... I noticed that the arrangement of the streets is set up in such a way as to funnel everything in towards the centre. So either hmm. they want this messenger to be funneled in towards the centre as well, or the messenger knows this as well and will use that fact to get them turned around and pull everybody in towards the centre while they circle out and around. So instead of going in straight lines, we're better off going in circles like a uh, cat does. And I will gesture in a, right, well, you've got this Idaho. Let's not Idaho, Wyoming. Let's go. Let's go, Wida Wida Idaho. I <laughs> Idaho's his brother. <laughs> Idaho is his brother, totally. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will. Do you, do you climb, mistress? Um... It's not my forte, but I can um, make a make an effort. He sort of crouches down and holds his hands ready. He needs um, to get up on the roof. Um, I don't think it's in Gretchen's nature to. Um, let me just quickly look up. I think if I think Prana Bindu does what I think it does, let me. Where are they? Gosh, this book is big. It is a very big book. Um, talents. Um, 
um, and um, Prana Bindu fifty six. Yep. Yeah. All right. I found it. Right. Cool. That's okay. I've worked it out. Um, right. Yeah. I'm gonna try and uh, run and jump up there uh, without his need. Um, okay. Uh, so I'm guessing that is a move. It is a move. Um, um, I guess it's going to be like move and power, which is like my, my lowest one. And we're looking for two successes on it. Two successes. All right. Please, can I spend a momentum to show off? Yeah. All right. Thanks. Um, so I've got three dice. Um, I've got target number of eight. And I need two successes, but you can also you can also give Ben threat to get another dice if you want. No, but Prana Bindu lets me when I make a move or a discipline roll that involves my body, like doing stuff, I can re-roll one of them dice for free. That's what Prana Bindu cool. does. Um, that's an eight. That's an eighteen. That's a seventeen. So I'm going to re-roll one of them, and I get a nineteen. Darn it! I get one success. <laughs> One success. So you you run part of the way up the wall and you kind of grip your fingers over the edge mm -hmm. and pull yourself up and over. So not quite the graceful leap, 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 and I'm on the roof that you'd hoped for. No, no, not not, not quite that. But uh, you do get up on the roof without support. Brute force and ignorance. It's the, the route I took. Rather than Parker. Wyoming... And runs up after you not literally runs up the wall he's not well, i'll lean down to offer him like a hand I'll, yeah I'll... okay well he'll take a hand on the way back up yeah i'll lean down to offer him help yeah he's not too proud i am of course i am I'm and he, he says to you and he says mistress arakeen is split over about three levels mm -hmm. uh, most of the houses are at this level but they have a second level from this level, we can go across rooftops and some of the small bridges and get elevation above the ground. Do you see that? I will and he look. snaps some points and there's a little glint uh -huh. off of a rooftop, a couple of streets away. He says, that'll be the Harkonnens or the... No, it won't be the Harkonnens. They're not running. So it'll be the Jonglers or the Taisheng. Probably right. Jonglers. I'm not, gonna, I'm not good enough to spot Taisheng. Okay. Okay, so they've either spotted something or are working on the same raised thing. What do you want to do? Uh, should we go and find out what they've spotted and at least then field that information back to Morgan? Okay. Sorry, he... um, sorry, uh, Sergeant Graff. <laughs> Apologies. Rank. He heads off at an easy lope, the kind favoured by scouts and explorers mm -hmm. that can eat up the miles without using up loads of energy. Obviously, mm -hmm. you're Prana Bindu trained, so you have complete control over every muscle in your body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I'll... You start heading out across Arrakis, Arakeen to see if there's a trace that's been picked up by one of the others. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Mr. Graf, Sergeant Graf. Yes. You've got a squad of three of your own troopers, uh, one Kiwa, trooper and their sword master has come with you as well Ooh, wow what's his Making name friends sword master aki <clears throat> the <Yes>. enormous one <laughs> this new scar yes he's nearly seven feet tall the um kiwa troops have changed out of their ceremonial whites and into uh, much more subtle, sandy grey. Very sensible. It's not perfect Arrakis camouflage, but it would fit very well on a sort of dry, rocky, hot climate world. It blends in better. Yeah. Right. Well, I suggest that we be the flying force and the House Dargoosh scouts uh, just swirl around us and see if we can pick up either what the other houses are doing or traces of this supposedly innocent civilian so we will just make our way straight and deep into town but with scouts kind of going out and coming back and going out and coming back around us okay that works 
with the idea that if we find something, then we have a heavy strike force in place. And we okay, just... can you make some kind of searching for things roll? Yes, absolutely. You probably need it to be move and searching for things. Move okay. and truth. Move and truth should... works, yeah. I don't like truth. <laughs> I'd rather move, really move and duty. Oh, God, faith's even worse. Don't be no, Move and duty faith. works because you're doing your duty for the house. Yes. You're not the scout here. They are. And you're using your asset, which is the scouts, so that gets you an extra dice. Oh, fabulous. That's the whole um, point of having them as your asset, is that you can use them for that. Excellent. And uh, we're moving swiftly, so that is one of my move focuses, so that helps. I'm going to stick with the three, because we're getting low. Doop, 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 doop. Oh, what is that? That is a no. And... Christ, hang on. Target is 13, and I have two successes. Whoop. Okay. You are pretty sure you've picked up a trail. Uh, you're also pretty sure that you've picked up a false trail as well, but you could tell the difference because the description that you've been given is one of the known aliases that Isaac has used. Mm. So knowing that it's not that one helps you narrow down the other one. Can I seem interested in the false trail anyway? Yeah, absolutely. Of course you can. So do you want to like send off one squad to go and investigate that to lend it more credence? We'll send off one squad. We'll thank whoever gave us that information profusely. Maybe promise them some honour with the house. Okay, and Dayla at the at the mobile base camp, the yeah. the Gunnaruks are very efficient. They they've set up a small radio station, screens. Um, they've got a small contingent of troops with them and ornithopters in the sky, which have got cameras. They're bringing up maps of the, the whole city. And what do you want to do? Oh, um, I think our job is mostly collating all the data as it comes in and then making sure it gets spread to, to Graph and the rest of the teams. Uh, are you able to share your communication frequency with us? Because then we can pinpoint your own people and then triangulate a pattern. I'm going to assume that, or retroactively <laughs> uh, say we set up a specific frequency for this cross-communication. That's not an unreasonable thing to suggest, yeah. yeah. If you're sharing a communication frequency with four houses, you don't want it to yeah. be your private one. Yeah. And we knew we were making the alliance before we started. Yeah. So, it's not... so you, you've set up your communications frequency and a bunch of dots start appearing on the map. Uh, the deputy overseer, Clavia Gunarooks, um, moves Dr. Heinrich out of the way. Doctor, please tend to your charges. Is it so? Uh, Sir Dela, yes? Yes. As you can see, this is Gunnaruk's technology at its finest. It definitely does seem to be working quite well. The Ornithopters are our strongest asset. Uh, the ones we are using have the quietened engines. Uh, you will not, not, you'll notice you cannot hear them very much. Uh, they are flying currently in a stable suspense mode with stealth technology built in. This enables them to be moved quickly and quietly without disturbing the locals. If you look to the sky now, there is one, another, and the third over here. Hmm. The pattern we have adopted is one that will enable us to triangulate all points within the city. Now, as you can see from the city architecture, it is designed around this expanding grid from the residence. Now, I yep. could not possibly comment on how this data came to light, but uh, we do have the jungler frequency. Oh. And as you I'm... can see, they are currently moving through this part of town on the opposite side to where you are, which is curious because uh, there should be no reason for somebody to be over there. Uh, we cannot pinpoint the Taishing, unfortunately. There's Des and 
intrusion technology is superior to our own. However, we understand that your lensing technology can be quite useful in this regard. So maybe in a future deal, we can improve the optics on our ornithopters. Oh, I was just going to say, can you imagine your ornithopters with our lenses? Very that quite. would be a sight to see. Would indeed be a, a great asset to us to engage in future trade. Of Kiwal troops. <laughs> that could be quite an interesting power block. We would, of course, need some way to ensure that this block of individual houses could be fed and perhaps kept in oh. line through some kind of combined I, storytelling of some kind. I don't know if, uh, if you happen to require any grain, but... Um... I understand that the Omora have a significant stockpile of grain. Uh, it is a shame that they are working for the opposite team. They could have been a great asset to us. Yes, it is. Sh do I, do, did, I would have. I would have. I yeah. would have told you. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, sh I would have shared all intelligence with 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 Sir Daler. Oh, it. I'll say then uh, it would have been a shame if they were working with the opposite team indeed. Um, perhaps though some kind of deal could be worked out. Right, do you want to make some kind of a commandy party. chatting up role? Yeah. Schmooze roll. Command flirting. <laughs> what I, I'm going to try and build out of this is get an idea of what kind of four-way trade could be built around this like we can give the lenses to our farmer friends they can provide grain to the good rooks but then we still need to involve the quinoa in some way um oh, i rolled already but there you go two successes Okay, so two successes, and you're not really concentrating on the here and now, but you're mapping out future trade deals, benefits, and arrangements that may serve the house. And as you suggest, you know the Amora want a trade deal with you for the lens so that they can tackle their polar ice cap problem. Uh, you know that the Gunaruks want lenses from you so that they can improve the perceptive technologies on their ornithopters. The keywords seem to like you for your honor at the minute, but roping them into the trade deal, they're going to need grain to feed their standing army. So by creating a bridge between them and the Omora, you've got another in there. So you're trying to make yourself the sort of central spoke of this That's little the idea. arrangement. Yeah. You think one of the best ways to go about that would probably be to put these guys off the Von Mir because at the minute their um, chemically enhanced soldiers are quite close to the Von Mir bio sculpted ones. Mm -hmm. And the fear is that if the two of them got into cahoots, that would give Von Mir a significant military advantage over you. So whatever you can do to keep the Gunaruks away from the Von Mir is probably what you need to be taking care of here. Okay. What sort of information do we have on the Von Mir at the moment coming in from? Not a lot, because you only recent you only found out yourselves that they have these bio sculpts. Mm. They've kept this very much under wraps. Your spies in Von Mir haven't been able to get to this level of evidence and technology. Yeah. And where are they creeping about in the city at the moment? Do we have any eyes on that? Uh, yeah, they should be quite easy to spot, yes. It would seem they are following the jonglers. Uh, and actually, hold on, let me make a roll on behalf of the Gunaruks. Yeah, there is some kind of signal coming from the jonglers that they seem to be following, some kind of subsonic frequency. Perhaps some kind of control frequency, which would imply that the, the Von Mir may have gifted the junglers mm. with a subsonic emitter. This, mm. this can be very dangerous. I have seen this technology used before. Uh, sometimes with wild animals, you can train them to attack 
even to kill by using these subharmonics to direct them in the direction to wish. This is yeah, quite irresponsible. Uh, one moment, there is another signal. There is a signal coming from orbit as well. Mm. It would appear the spacing guild are in communication with someone in Arkeen also, someone in the field. A single person? It is difficult to tell. Uh, the signal is quite, no, it is quite tight band. There we go. Yeah, they are pinging the junglers also. That doesn't bode overly well, does it? That would suggest that the, the guild may be providing covert intelligence to our opposition. She was just about to say enemies. <laughs> It is a shame how the junglers have chosen to treat you throughout this this meeting. It's unfortunate yeah, then that the Von Mir have grown grown so close to them. Yeah, so we were quite interested in the Von Mir. We thought that uh, it would be difficult to ally with both your house and theirs with the, the friction between you. But they had hoped to remain neutral in your affairs and perhaps communicate with both houses. Perhaps even broker a peace between you at some point in the future. After all, it's not uh, only two generations ago that your houses were very close. They may well one be one day be again, but uh, for now things are difficult, fluid perhaps. And they do seem to have fallen in with the junglers on this matter. Mm, right. It does seem unfortunate that they're handing out such technology so indiscriminately. Well, as are we. I believe their technology is being loaned, whereas ours is being collaborated. We'll see which one turns out the better in the long run. Right, here we go. I have something. The junglers and this spacing guild signal are converging on a part of town over here. It seems they may have located the courier they're looking for. Or oh, they're trying to lead us into a trap, as we still don't know where our rather canly minded friends have gotten to. Indeed so, yeah. Okay, what does anybody want to do? Punch the junglers, but uh, that <laughs> might not be appropriate. Yeah, actually that. Yeah, I'm allowed to punch wow. the junglers? You did see them. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, so like, I assume me and uh, Wyoming are like making our, because he pointed them out and be like, yeah. right, okay. I'd be like, Morgan, Morgan, um, Wyoming's seen some junglers up ahead. What do you want us to do with them? Can they meet with an accident? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Fish it's a dangerous city. One. Yes. Fist, elbow, uh, knee. Try and keep them safe. Maybe secure them in a you know, safe location so they don't hurt themselves. Wait, you don't no want them hurt? They, should... they don't hurt themselves. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could do that. Right. Wyoming moves his needle rifle around and he says, look, uh, I'm not going to be much help to you up close and personal, but I am quite skilled at range. So tell me what you want me to shoot and it will fall down. Go for uh, the knees, boo. <laughs> go, for the, go for the knees. <laughs> I like that reference. Um, uh, uh, well... Uh, Sergeant Graf thinks we should prevent them from hurting themselves. Uh, so if you can render one or two of them unconscious, and I will um, endeavour to do the same, sleeping people tend not to get hurt. Right to that. And I will... Um... And he sets up, he climbs up another level and, mm -hmm. and starts scoping down his rifle towards the position, you know, the jungler is to be at. And I will foolishly throw myself into a fight with junglers. <laughs> Okie dokie. Well, you can go first. Oh, thanks. 
Well, you're um, a player. They're not. No, they're not. They're um, the NPC scum. They're the NPC scum. Um, I will... Um, how, what am I... Gonna... So when I, when we find them, what are they doing? Just like moving along, running? Um, they're sort of doing little circuits around a bit of town. This is a small force of junglers, not the main one. Mm -hmm. But these ones are sort of prowling around the outside edges of that square where you first met your contact. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I would like to perhaps find a spot where I could maybe just um, set upon one as they they make their way past, like just clothesline one. Okay, clothesline away. Jump out of a out of a alley and just be like pow, kind of thing. Um. um so um, this would be like battle in duty maybe like yes graf told me graf told me to render them useless he's a sergeant that's a duty it's true you can't argue with that yeah actually following orders good yeah. heavens yeah understanding is not necessary only obedience fair enough yeah that applies then yeah um, and of course, this is the weirding way I'm going to do this with. Just, just yeah, like, I'm, I'm not surprised. Pow. somehow. just that kind of stuff. Um, so, not not my best, but nearly my best. That's fifteen. Um, and because it's the weirding way, that means anything under seven is a double. Do I think I need an extra dice for this, or am I gonna be all right? Two. What do we think? Two. So how important is this? Oh, let's try it with let's let's uh, it could be useful though you sure i don't know all right okay no we'll do three then well they're standing around here for some reason and yeah. we'd like to know what that is all right you punch them um <laughs> oh i've got a one which is two successes a seven yep. which is two successes two more successes oh and the other one's a 19. so i got four successes so you've as... got four successes on this first <laughs> jungler that comes sort of cartwheeling round the corner and as they they appear in their flashing silks you just sort of lean up and in and you clothesline them right in the throat yeah flipping them backwards into two of the following junglers that are behind them bringing all three of them crashing down with that one clutching at his throat and turning kind of purple in the face good um so there are these two other junglers scrabbling to reach their feet having been knocked down. So that's, yep, that, that'll use up all of your successes. We're not banking those. Yeah, sure. He spanked that guy right into his mates. And as one of them stands up, he kind of leans sideways a little bit and falls down <laughs> a spreading patch of red on his kneecap. Nice. Starts to grow. And he seems almost surprised before shouting out in alarm. Uh... The other one scrabbles to his feet pulls a knife and activates a half shield fine the million that's all he can do this time because you had him knocked down so it's your go again um all right um i don't have voice so um i was just sorry my, ca my character sheet's there so it makes me do makes me do weird things when i look at the other screen um i have a bodkin that's my only knife which is a little tiny thing uh so i will i'm just gonna rush this guy and and try and get so close his, his shield because it's not a full shield it's only what a half shield yep I'm just gonna get try and get. So you're so... gonna punch him in one side of the head that isn't shielded. Yeah, just he's get... trying to keep the shielded side of his body towards you. He's adopted sort of a dueling stance with a backhanded dagger to protect his arm, and then a shield wrapped around that half of his body as well. Oh, just do the just do like one of those those things where I rush him, but then twist and like kick him with the back of like scorpion kick style thing, and just yep, just just get him like that and like it's completely i should break three spinal bones here but i'm a benegesserate thing yeah um i'm gonna try and do that 
Um, I'm going to leave that momentum. I'm just going to try and do it. It's more more battling and duty with some more uh, wading way, I think, is, is what we're aiming for here. Um, I get two successes. Okay, so you dodge past, avoid his shield, and punch him. Yeah. In the kidney. Yeah. And he kind of grunts and goes down. Um, followed a moment later by another little blossom of red on his knee. I will. So two of them with sore red knees and one of them with a very vibrant purple face now. I it will... would seem that first one you collapsed his windpipe. Nice. It's fair, fair, fair. It's, if you're going to show off by cartwheeling around and being ostentatious, it's, it's only fair. Um, if there are any other junglers around, I will... Um, there are not. That was the three of them. They were a small squad. Ah, I will since, drag since them. Since you got, since okay. you got two successes and you only needed one, does that mean we have two momentum now? No, because I don't think I want to bank combat successes. I think okay. I'll use them to do more damage and increase the putting downness of people. Sure. Um, if if that would be uh, the end of of stuff. I will begin dragging them into uh, an alley and such. In the alley, there is a small boy mm -hmm. sat on the step of a house, mm -hmm. back door of a house, and he's watching you intently with blue on blue eyes as you drag these three limber, athletic young people Mm -hmm. in one at a time or two at a time and then the third one looks like he's got very big very serious blue eyes uh are you local boy he puffs his chest out a little and says i am fremen ah do you like a gift what kind of gift three off-planet water-rich fools we are not water stealers, but these fools are rich. You are an off-worlder. I am. How did you defeat three of them? Because I am good and they are bad. It is so. He goes into the house and he comes out a moment later with uh, a man who's quite wrapped up against the desert. He's still wearing a still suit, but it's open at the front and mm -hmm. has the, has the, the mask suit. hanging free. And he sees you and he bows. I'm getting used to this hands. now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're not nearly this polite back on uh, House Dagush. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for this gift. You're welcome. Let me offer you a gift in exchange. Oh. I have heard it said that the hunt you are on has been rigged. And the quarry has a signal to lead the foxes to it. Ooh. Um. It is said the quarry makes a noise so loud it can be heard by the stars. Ah. Um, can I take a moment and see if I can, like, you know, because I can taste poisons and all that craziness, just see if I can listen, like, force my eardrums to listen to ridiculous frequencies or something. Bend my give eyes. Give it a go. Bend my um, eyes to look at ultraviolet. Violet. Uh, ultraviolet might be a bit of a stretch. But you know but what I mean. Yes, this is going to be a very, very difficult role. Oh, okay. Just so you know. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's not impossible for you. But I think we're looking for at least four successes. Right, okay. Um... It's definitely a discipline because I have the focus and observe there. Uh, a 
And then it's a truth, I think. It's discipline and the truth. Yeah, so I would accept that. That would give me 14. Four successes. I would need to get under eight on two dice. Or I could spend some momentum and have three dice. I just got one. Oh, I didn't. I'm not looking at that that page. Um, so that would go up to two, and then I'll take it back down to one. Um, let me check Prana, Prana Bindu again. Um, Fifty six. Yeah. Uh, whenever you attempt a move or discipline te test which requires control of your body, uh, you can perfectly use heart rate, your internal organs. So yeah. Okay. I don't know where it. It feels like it should, but obviously that's that's up to you, Ben. Because that would let me. Yeah, no, I'll accept it. But like I say, it's it's actually a difficulty four roll looking okay. at the the difficulties because it's very very difficult. This is investigating knowledge whose very existence has been hidden, kind of thing. Yeah. All right. So I get a one and a ten, and then a fourteen, which would be three successes. Yeah, you I can could, give me a point of threat. I could re no, I could prana bind. I could re-roll the fourteen. You absolutely and, could. And see if I get lower than eight, which would yeah. give me a, a double success. It would. I've got I've got three now, so I just need one more. All right, I'm gonna roll it. Right, I'll re-roll that. And I get a complication instead. I get a twenty. Okay, you can also give me a point of threat for another dice. Uh, can you do that after you've rolled though? I'll allow it because I need the threat. I'll take it. I think a sandworm is really expensive. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's a 10. So that does give me a fourth, but I still obviously still gave you a complication as well. So I go deaf. So you, you have <laughs> no. a fourth uh -huh. and you concentrate on forcing your ears to hear more than they absolutely should be. The, the cost that comes with that is that your other senses grow dull mm -hmm. by comparison your ears tune to incredible frequencies the, the sound of the city comes alive for you you can hear insects in the walls of houses you can hear radio signals you can't make out what they're saying but you can hear the signals coming mm -hmm. from yourself from the roof nearby from the jonglers you can get this almost web of radio signals around you coming from all the communicators in all of the buildings that you know of. But there is this one pulsed signal coming from above that you kind of hear. And it's just like a, a triple beep, 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 coming down from above. Hmm. Um, there must be some uh, some house Dargouche battle sign because Atreides have it and they're cool. So we must have it. And I, you know, I will I'll wave my hand for uh, Wyoming in a I'm not making noise anymore kind of thing. Wyoming, yeah, kind of thing. He's got, yeah. um, to, to meet up on me um, and I will nod to the, the Fremen. Um, and... He's already dragged the first body inside. Yeah. Nod and while to... he's doing that, his son is pulling the boots off of it. Good lad. Good lad. Good good supple, supple boots for jungulars um uh, yeah and then i will head um into the into the square or not out into the open but you know out of the alley and along the the way um until wyoming meets up with me um and then when we do um i will be uh, very quiet in my communication with him but um there is a a space signal something from above it's... He's bellowing his responses. I'd just be like... You can also hear his heart beating and the blood pulsing in his veins. I just put my the hand on his face. The sound of him digesting things. I just put my hand on his face. Just stop him talking. There's a s signal. Just be quiet. Um, it's from space, and I'll, I'll point in the direction of, of where space. it's. Yeah, <laughs> space. Um, I'll point in the direction of, of where I think it's aiming at currently. Um, okay. tell, tell Graf, go over there and tell him. Excellent. Right, Isaac, I need you to try and dodge. <gasps> right. 
So move and I would accept no. Power. It's not no, is it? Truth. Uh, yeah, move and truth would do it. Okay. If you prefer, yeah, that'll work. Truth or power. Ooh, uh, I got a four, so that's a crit on move because I've got well, stealth is a focus. So I'm, I've been trying to move stealthily. So I think that would be reasonable. And a 19, so two successes. Two successes. You are struck in the calf. Um, you hear a very faint whistling sound behind you and start to move. And you're struck in the calf by some kind of dart. Oof. Looking down, there's a, a little tiny black feather sticking out of the back of this dart and your perceptions start to go very wobbly your leg gets very cold and numb and the numbness starts to spread its way up your leg what do you want to do uh well i uh say to my communicator that i've been tagged uh and then i'm guessing that i pass out <laughs> <laughs> you have enough time to take an action other than calling it in before you pass out Mm, no, there's not really anything that he could do about this. Oh, your leg up. <laughs> Did the didn't someone give us a, a thing that would uh, metabolize any poison? Didn't one of the who is it? The Gunnerex? Graf has it. I think. Yeah, I don't have it. Ah, uh, uh, Graf has it. Oh no. So yes, and a moment later, you you it all goes black as you collapse to the ground. <gasps> Isaac. Oh, Graf's disappeared. So, Dayla, you... Oh, good, he's back. <laughs> Graf, you hear over the radio the voice of Isaac saying, I've been tagged, and then a thump. Dayla, you also hear this. I, well, I, I would say that Gretchen does too, but she hears it through the communicator that um, Wyoming is currently reporting in on that there is a signal coming from space. To all of you, there's a signal Isaac. coming in from space. I've just been tagged. Thump. Taylor, are you on the line? Do we have a location for Isaac? Uh, why well, should no? No, because he went super stealth with his cyber's hood on. Unless you he... wanted them to be able to track you, Aaron. Uh, your own I mean... house. I would have assumed that they would have known where I was, where I was going, but, uh, but were you letting them track you? Yeah. I, well, I doubt, I doubt I would have allowed anybody to track me because I wouldn't want that signal to be piggybacked on. Area, when you but, broke yeah. radio silence, surely that would yeah. have given an opportunity to triangulate. Okay. Well, well I'll tell you lost what. The Gunnaruks, if they can triangulate. The Let, let's signal see that how good the Gunnaruks are. That's one, two. I imagine it's going to be hard, but three successes. So, how good was your stealth earlier, Aaron? Uh, I I got two on that last roll. Okay, so they do manage to penetrate the stealth and triangulate where that radio burst comes from, and they can direct you towards it. Uh, Graf is the closest. Okay. Um, <coughs> well, we will. I will take the momentum. flying squad and double time it to that location. Okay, make a move and battle roll. No, it's not move and battle. It's duty uh, and move. Yes, I will. I will uh, get the hang of these stats. <laughs> I'm looking at uh, them in front of me right now. That's my standard two. Do I get anything else? No, probably not. Uh, but that's two crits. So that's four successes. Ooh. Uh, you burst onto the scene just as a black clad person clambers down off of a roof nearby, slinging a long sniper rifle over their back. Uh, they crouch the down over I the body. I see you. <laughs> and as you come in, they look around startled and try to cheese it. Do you want to do anything before they run away? I would like to 
pound them into them. a wall. Go then. Just full pell, continue momentum, body rush them into the nearest wall. Nice. Kind of thing. I approve of this message. <laughs> Which I'm going to call battle and duty. Because I don't like sneaky fucks. Um, oh, that's only one success there. That's a bit crap. Right, let's see if he he does not manage to get away from you. Oh, ah. so he tries to dodge, and and as he does so, you're reduced to one success because he did get a success in dodging you, but you still hit him with your definitely not a mace, honest gov. It's my symbol of office. Yes, kind of charging is like a lance forwards. <laughs> you knock him back, winding him. Uh, he, in turn, attempts to flee. Oh, attempts to flee. Yeah, he gets a complication. Kiwa. So, yeah, as he attempts to flee, he does run into the Kiwa, who kind of grab him, just bodily hold on to him. They're not even trying to, like, knock him about or anything. They just kind of tackle him to the ground and hold him. We have him. What do you want to do with him, Mr. Graf? Sergeant uh, Graf. Secure him. Pin him to the ground. Treat him honorably. But make sure he does not escape. They are a tricksy bunch. And I will go and check on what I hope is my mentor. Or our house mentor. Uh, yeah, on the, lying on the floor, there is a, a hooded and cowled figure. But when you pull back the cybers hood that obscures its features, you do recognize it as Isaac. Uh, sticking out of his right calf, there is a small black feathered dart. Mm -hmm. ah, I will resist the urge to lick it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what it is. Ah, poison. Oh. I'll lick it later. Keep it for me. I will put it in a pouch for examination later. Um, do I suspect he has been poisoned? Well, he's not moving and is very heavy. Well, I, I have the key wire and they can carry him. That's not a problem. Um, His breathing appears to be slow but normal. His pulse is there. It's slow. It's more like he's in a very deep sleep than anything else. I'm going to slap him. That's fair. Isaac, now is not the time for slumber. Wake him up. I'm enjoying it anyway. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I will take a moment to sit beside Isaac and enjoy the silence. <laughs> oh, song about that. And then I will break out the vial of anti venom, antidote, anti everything, and pour it down his throat. So you, you come to spluttering and coughing. Yeah, your hood is gone and you appear to be surrounded by Dargish troops with their rifles on ready and Graf sat next to you holding that small vial. Afternoon. <laughs> Afternoon, Sergeant Graf. It's good to see you as always. Did you have a nice nap? It was unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have a present for you, and I'll point to the uh, black-robed figure that the Kiwa are pinning to the ground. Oh, I'd I'll like get to, to see a... them. I'd like to have a chat with that individual. Um, is it going to be an honourable chat or a standard chat? <laughs> I would say probably a standard chat. I will take the Kiwa away with me while we continue our treasure hunt. Excellent I'll idea, leave a Sergeant Graf. The troop with you just to secure the prisoner. Thank you, Sergeant. Dela, a white firework goes up above the palace at Arakeen, indicating that someone has the package, but it has not yet been delivered. That's fine. Um, 
Zagunarux. Zagunarux. I'm, I'm starting to do it even when describing Zagunarux. it now. Zagunarux. Yeah, Zagunarux. Zagunarux. One of them uh, needs to be called Angle. They are so efficient. He was a very good scientist. Uh, so, Clavia Gunarux, the definitely not an heir because we don't do that. However, her dad is currently in charge of the house. Uh, says to you, yeah, this is very suspicious. As I say, there is very clearly some kind of communication going on around here that has led these people to find the target. Uh, it would appear that the junglers have sent out roving parties uh, and have yet somehow their lead group has gone straight to the target and they have them. Yeah. But they have not yet delivered problem. the prize. But we'll deal with that. Um, do you have any ornithopters on standby or can any of them be used to carry people? Yeah, Large I can probably fit four, six, six people at most into one of the ornithopters. But I, I would have to call one down. I figure we have maybe 20 minutes before they return to the palace. Yep. But, but orders uh, up to one, orders up to one. Please come in for landing at command site. Can I um, create an asset as a back channel to our farm boyfriends? Interesting. How exactly would that work? Well, seemingly they're going. You've out got of their... the business card for the, um, yeah, Sir Quindler. Hmm. Perhaps there are details on there for how to communicate. Because yeah, I mean, you have be... a communicator frequency yeah. that you can. Yeah, but like some kind. So you of... could communicate to the head, the head of house here, but not to the yeah. individuals. No, uh, but um, I basically want them because at the moment they're distracting and delaying. I want them to increase that to the maximum amount. Are they? Uh, they're so like really religious slow. folk, aren't they? The the farm boys. There yeah. must be like a psalm or um. Well, they're what? not religious. They're they're kind of. Very experienced in the mm. understanding of religion, so they have a lot of time to sit and discuss philosophy, religion, and ethics. So while they're not like very religious, that's the more of a von Mir thing. Yeah, but there must be like um, a a like. Uh, oh yeah, I'm sure they do know plenty of tenet psalms. Twenty-three, uh, verse yeah. seven: Thou shalt endeavor to muck about even more than before. <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Um, ah, the third page of the well, commandments. Yeah. yeah. I'm assuming at this point, yeah, the junglers actually have hold of the package. Looks that so way. We need them to do something. They may well be, well, if they have a similar command center structure, they may well be, there'll be people there guiding the junglers back by the shortest route. And we need right, them well, I'll to tell turn you what that we'll into do, the uh, cab route. <laughs> I will get you to make a difficulty to faith and communicate role. Inspiring faith drives excellence. I'm trying to inspire everyone to come together here. Yeah, I'll take it. Okay. Uh, you want me to grab a momentum? We only have one left. It's okay. Yeah, you can take it. I don't need momentum to punch a worm later, so it's all good. Yeah. We, just well, need, we, we need threat to make the worm come. Down here, we can catch up with them. If we don't slow them down, they'll probably win. Yeah. Right. I'll do it. Uh... Nothing and two sixes, so that's four successes. Oof. Nice. I uh, so you get through to the Amora and you make your impassioned case for him to stitch up your enemies and tell him to get his boys on the job, and they do. And 
you can't tell what's going on, but the little dots on the screen, even as it's being folded away into a briefcase sized thing, start to get a little bit more chaotic in that zone. So you've probably gained yourself an extra 10 minutes or so. Actually 20, because you've got two successes, didn't you? So you've got just under an hour to try and intercept. So collaborate with one another and tell me what your plan is. Wyoming, Wyoming, have they, what, it, is the signal moving? Like, is the signal changing, like, position? The is space it... signal has stopped. Ah, oh, the signal stopped, Wyoming. Um, give me the communicator. <laughs> Where was it last pointing to? Do I have a rough idea? Yeah, um, the opposite side of the marketplace to where you are. All right. Um, I I think wherever this package is, it's opposite. It's it's like opposite side of the the market to me. Where, um, what is the wind the surveillance back and and see who was roughly there a moment or two ago. Follow that one, is what Gretchen will be like. Check that one, and I will start running towards like heading back towards the the palace, like, you know, just to get moving. Moving towards the way is better than just standing at the back. Isaac will communicate back to Sir Daler. Uh, Sir Daler, I am back on the board, thanks to Sergeant Graff. Uh, I am preparing to have a discussion with the, with the sniper. Unless you have further directive of me, uh, is there any task you would have me do at this point? He's basically asking, do you want him to go, go after, you know, go after the prize? Uh, I think try if to converge assets on the prize, it may be useful at this point. However, yeah, it's kind of a call at this point. It's talk to the Taishan or yeah. go for the prize. I think we'll have to talk to the Tatian. We can cover we the can... prize with our yeah. ground troop allies. Um, and a couple of the troop can stay back with the Raff. new asset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want... Uh, your team is the grab team. And my team in the Ornithopter will be the holding team. And we're going to make a bit of wind as we come in to stop them dead. Interesting. Uh, Gretchen, how close are you? I have no idea. I'm just running towards the uh, the embassy. Okay, let me talk to Wyoming. Wyoming, how close are you? I have a gun for you. Half a click, sir. Mm. Well, I'll keep it with me. I think you're going to like this one. It's a Taishing sniper rifle. Is it my birthday? <laughs> I'd have to ask your mother if I could find her. Boom, boom. Military humor. <laughs> okay, Hi. so, um, Dayla, then, let's have you I'll do... I'll ask my guests. Anyone want to join me? And otherwise, I'll lead a contingent of uh, mainly quinoa in this case, as... The idea is that we're going to block the route to... Hey, Clavia says, All right, men, out of the Ornithopter, I even fly. <gasps> and she boots all, like. of the, all of her men out and says, uh, you two, uh, Sadela and uh, what is it, Inkosi, you yeah, will come. I'm going to sit next to her. <laughs> so you've got the, um, the Inkosi, too. you've got her... You've got two of your troops, two of her troops. We need now is some sort of surface to air missile and... Mm. And then you've got a Kiwa chap hanging on in the doorway. Nice. Oh, I see. Vietnaming this. Do, 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 do. Uh, does, does the only thought to have speakers? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Oh. 
I love the smell of spice in the morning. Uh, right, Sir Dayla, I would like you to make a duty and communicate roll to fire up the troops. Total number of successes will be distributed amongst the parties moving towards the region. We did just get an extra point of momentum from uh, Moronic. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you. I'm going to spend that straight away. Yeah, um, go for it. My house needs a worthy heir, and this seems the point to prove it. Yeah. Oh, that one went off the table. Doesn't count if it goes off the table. Oh. No. You're not meant to help. <laughs> uh, on eight and four. And two sixes. Again, so um, and the other one was a uh, seventeen, but it fell off the table. So that's four successes. Interesting. So they get distributed amongst the others. So it's one for you firing everyone up, mm -hmm. and then three successes spread across everybody else. So that will mean that Gretchen and Graf, you can converge at about the right time on this mass of jonglers and von Mir that are making haste towards the palace. Oof. They're going straight through the main streets now in like a massed posse. They've got a von Mir bioscopt at the front. They've got a von Mir bioscopt at the back. There are jonglers All right. cartwheeling and running through the streets. These bioscopts... It looks are... like some of the jonglers aren't exactly the traditional acrobaty jongleur types you might expect oh, it's uh, it's almost like they might be harkonnen troops pretending to be jonglers <gasps> these bioscopes at the front and the back are they the big dudes they are the big dudes i'm gonna jump on him from a roof okay no if i jump on him and, and he clutters up the uh, alley it's just going to crunch everybody up. I'm just going to, because that's what me and Wyoming were doing. We were running oh, across the, the roofs. Oh, are with them as well, of course. I forgot about the Amora. I'm yeah. so bad. I'm just going to run and and jump off off the roof and try and land on one of these bioscopes. Do it. Yeah. Um, Do it. Um, so, hang on, let me find my, my character sheet again, because I was, I was looking at the OBS. Um, this is definitely battle. Definitely yes. battle. Yes, I think this is quite safely battle. I mean, I'd let you take move if you wanted to, but no, that's battle a four. seems better. That's a four. <laughs> four versus eight. Um, yeah, I can not a difficult eight. life choice. Yeah. Uh, um, and then what do we think the drive is for this? Uh, duty to house... I don't house know. Dagush? I think this might be power. No, oh, power's rubbish. Power's is only four. What's power's your duty power. and why? Um... um Duty to House Dargush, it's eight. So that would give me a, a 15 what again. Why is it? Why is it? Uh, because it, it's my duty to make Dayla look the best and winning and taking these guys out and oh, doing no, it. What is the statement? Oh, the statement. Understanding is not necessary, only obedience. Okay, so the statement doesn't really count, but I'll take duty as the role. Yeah. That's making Dayla look you good. You can, however, shout it at them as you punch them. What? <laughs> I don't understand don't why understand I'm doing this. Why they're being beaten. <laughs> they just need to be beaten. Yeah. Um, 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 we need to win. I don't know why, but we do. We just do. I want to win. I love what chat are saying about you guys at the minute. They need to keep this game going as the channel's groat sink. <laughs> yeah. Just give us momentum. We'll do something with it. I um, promise we'll be cool with it. All right. We'll do a lot. We I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump off the roof, try and land on a, a bioscopt. Um, and I don't really mind if I don't do much. I just want to, like, crash it, have people fall over, just have, like, a massive mess of, of mostly humans. Um, you want to be Thor punching the Hulk, don't you? Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. I've got oh. lightning. I've got lightning. Look, there it is. Ding, da, 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 ding, da, ding, da, da, ding. Um, uh, that's if this is battle. That's four successes. I rolled oh. a seven and a six. Yay! Right, these things don't dodge because they're they're 
brick privies. So you slam into the head of this thing. Mm -hmm. Are you aiming to slam in, kick and get free? Or are you aiming to like grab hold and hang on? What would what would cause the most the biggest pile up? Like I'm expecting these are skinny arakeen like Yeah, I think if alleys. you landed and held on to its face. Yeah. You'd probably be able to cause more confusion because then you can go for soft bits like eyes and Yeah, all right. I'll land on him, wrap my and... arms around his head, put my legs around it, like piggyback it, fingers in eyes, everything oh, your legs like that. Will go around its neck. These things are quite big. Oh, good. And then you're, you're it's going to. Onto its head. It's, it's almost like an ogre in terms of size. Oh, cracking. Yeah. I just want to make it stumble and um, stop momentum and people into crash into the, the building back. on the other side of the wall. Uh, let's out a roar that is desperately painful to your enhanced hearing. Mm-hmm. And you cling on for dear life, holding on to an ear and then clutching at its face with the other hand as you That's rock sure. backwards and forwards. The junglers scatter around you. And at that point... I think I found them. Oh, ho. <laughs> oh, ho. Oh, no. You oh, no. cheeky little so-and-so. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Sad the junglers uh, all like scatter at this point. They're going all over the place. Um, Graf, yes. you burst onto the scene with Isaac as well because you're with him now. Oh no, you're not. You're back talking to the oh, Taisheng. Yeah. Uh -huh. Questioning. Having a polite chat. I think we called it a standard chat. Yes. Standard chat. I love the way you said standard or honourable. <laughs> well. So your little contingent of troops, your 20 men squad. Uh, uh, yes, probably by this point we would have called everyone together. Um, yes. And a couple of Kiwa bringing up the rear. And the Kiwa, and the Kiwa Swordmaster. Um, You're the snatch team, you don't have to fight everyone. Don't have to, <laughs> but I want to. Uh, so there is a scene of chaos in a narrow street. I there presume. is a scene of abject chaos in a narrow street, and it's about to get more chaotic because you come wading in from a side street in a little flying wedge formation, crashing okay. into the junglers like a bowling ball into pins. Yay! Swooping them up. Boom! Um, I will request uh, that the Kiwa uh, go to the exit to the alley and hold the line while we clear up the dancing fools. And then I'm just going to start swinging. And you just start swinging. So you go toe to toe and you start flailing around. So let's have a battle and i guess it's duty again for you isn't duty. it really yes duty is a heavy weight heavy weight in my hand <laughs> dodging uh, da, 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 da. that's a crit that's yes. a success of three Boop. but warfare wise you deploy your asset into the middle of their asset and I'm going to roll another dice then. But the anyway. troops um, go toe to toe. Scouts versus acrobats, left, right, and center. The big, meaty Von Mir biosculpt sees your house colors, oh, uh, lets out a bellow, and comes I'm lumbering to towards that one you anyway. personally. Been here before, big fella. Yeah, round two. Didn't end well then. More momentum. Lewis. Oh, we, got, we, we got one more. Yeah. Lewis, your communicator crackles. Yeah. What does it say? <laughs> uh, good evening, Sadela. This is Sequinla. Good evening sir quinla with regard to our conversation from earlier we would very much like to precede our terms of alliance 
Oh, that's convenient. We have a little bit more space on this ornithopter. Well, should you make your way towards the palace, there's a fairly well-set, red-headed young man. Perhaps if you were to give him a lift to the palace, he might have something for you. Well, we were going to see how our friends were doing, but this seems like an important matter. We'll I think your you. friends might be quite upset when they realise that they've dropped something. <laughs> Certainly. Um, we'll give your your uh, your friend or colleague a lift. I mean, like I said, we have a little bit more space aboard. Okay, so Millie, you're on top of this thing, punching it in the head, yeah. gouging at its eyes. Oh, your right. troops are engaged with the jonglers all around. Morgan, you're faced off against this big bio sculpt with club in hand, ready Bring to go it. for it. When an ornithopter buzzes low over the alley, beautiful made, lovely Gunnaruk's design, like a little dragonfly, just kind of <laughs> buzzes over the alley and ignores you and keeps going. Carry on! Daily, you see a, a red-headed boy. I say boy, he's, he's a very, very large boy, very heavy set. Try to imagine like a, a rugby player, because that's what this boy very much is. He's their barrel ball champion. Yeah, he's a part-time soldier, but he's really good at barrel ball. And he's got his head down and his shoulder in, and he is just running anybody that gets in his way is getting kind of shoulder barged out of the way and he's clutching something to his chest i'll turn to uh to the gunnaruk pilot and say i've always wanted to do this do you think you could like fly just in front and open the back <laughs> There's only one day to find out. Bondore. <laughs> <laughs> like I have I'll good news and I have bad news. Oh, complications. Uh, oh well. The dragonfly wings fold up and back as the body of the ornithopter slides down into the alley and the door opens and you reach out and you get this guy by the arm and you can see he's clutching a package to his chest in the other arm and then there's a, a crash and then one of the ornithopter wings breaks off and the whole thing slides to a grinding halt in the alley all the wings have fallen off behind it mm. Oops. I didn't do I guess it. We're running then. I guess the answer is no, I cannot make this maneuver. <laughs> it's good to test these things. It's uh, information for next time. Run, go. <laughs> what am I saying, run, go? I'm coming too. Yeah, come on. There's you We're all and going. the Kiwa air and uh, the Gunaruk's definitely not air and this, this one Omora kid who's totally out of his depth, completely surrounded by Nobleborn, <laughs> but he's got the package. And he's running. Yeah. He's good at one thing, running and holding on to stuff, which is two things, but he's good at both of them. That's <laughs> isn't a strong point. <laughs> 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 it's not one of the three things he's good at <laughs> and he attempts to pass off the package to you as he runs so he flings it sideways in your direction oh great <laughs> catch so let, let's have a, a power and move roll to see if you can catch it well, I have grace, down. so grace will help. Graceful, like a rugby player. Yeah, that well-known saying. I'm graceful. It, it doesn't matter what he does. Uh, so power and grace. Go on. Uh, three successes. Excellent. You catch it. You catch the package, and you burst in the doors of the palace with it. What are you going to do? I'm going to slow down to a walk and get the rest to walk with me. Uh, straighten up my jacket and uh, 
will saunter in. Like a boss. And say, oh, sorry. Are we early? <laughs> Are you showing them the package? Yeah, well, I'm just holding it in my hand. So <laughs> they'll notice. The, uh, the Harkonnen facilitator gets on his communicator and says something. And outside in the alley, a red we're still having a fabulous fight. Goes yes. up over the streets of Arakeen. <laughs> I'd like to say the fight stops, but that bio, those bioscopes, they're not stopping. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> right, I well, have rapid it's recovery. It's not stopping either. <laughs> but see, that's more information we can use with the Gunnarux. Mm-hmm. Uncontrollable wild. Yeah. Ouch. However, the sculpt that's attacking you only gets one success in doing so. Ooh. Excellent. So let's have your attack roll against him. It'll take oh. one away from your attack. Uh, Me or Morgan? This is Morgan. Oh, okay. Was, I've done this uh, backwards because Morgan should have gone first. I'm a bad person. Right. I got three successes. Three successes, so that's a net two. As it goes for you, you bring your mace up and chin it, sending it reeling backwards. Meanwhile, Millie, you... Mm -hmm. Can I use one of them at least to make it reel back across some jonglers? Yeah, yeah, that seems <laughs> fair. <laughs> your one, Millie. Yep. What are you going to do? Um, I have a, a level one bodkin, so will that give me an extra dice? If I use it. And so what you're doing, or if you're using it to stab the thing, yes. Well, I'm going to, because it's like a little knife, isn't it? It's just like a little one. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to put it like in its nostril or something, and just just rip it as I want to just, just cause like maximum outrageous pain. And then maybe I'll just jump off. And... Outrageous pain, minimal damage. I like it. Well, yeah, quite a lot of damage, but nothing permanent, permanent. Yeah. Just, you know, like nothing Gretchen debilitating because is... it's also permanent having your nostril yeah. ripped open. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. Like Gretchen is ultra violent. Yeah, almost. like it's like yeah. almost, yeah. Um, but polite. Uh, so I want to do that. Uh, I want to do that. Well, I'll apologize afterwards. Um, Please, so that... don't mind me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that gives me an extra dice. So I have three dice, yeah? Yep. Okay. Um, and then this is this is this battle. Oh, sorry, it reduces difficulty, doesn't add dice. All right, okay, reduces oh. difficulty. So, so be down a bit. Um, so this will be battle, because and short blades, and then what? Um, justice. Justice seems justice. a little bit off. I sorry. think. No, no, power. no. Justice. That they told me this is. Oh, this is justice. No, ah, uh, yeah, okay, justice, because they tried to blow you up before you came here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the scorpions. Um, and the scorpions they tried to kill me and yeah. killing. All right, so they made a couple of attempts. Yeah. Um, so that would get fourteen with a um, a focus of seven. Um, I got fourteen and a fifteen, so that's one success. So you kind of poke it in the nostril, and it's like yeah. crashes into a building and takes the whole wall off of one side of a building. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, do. One of the jonglers blows a whistle and, oh. and the jonglers all run oh. at once. They just scatter into the alleys. Oh. Your men are like, sir, do we proceed? Do we pursue? No, leave them. So These between you two... Creations, however, we are going to destroy. Between you two and your men, well, remember you were told not to kill. We're not killing. They're not alive. They're not people. Okay. They're certainly not humans. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there are enough troops with you that you can put them down and immobilize them. And if you then want to finish them off, you absolutely can. Permanently mm. damage might be a. <laughs> oh, we could hamstring them. I wonder at what point Dela is like, I should just check in because they're probably not going to be doing sensible things. 
No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm already trying to work out how I'm going to defend our actions. <laughs> like, I know they're doing something. I'll, I'll just start working on a defence. Too busy drinking cocktails. Don't worry about him. So between the, the squad, which is your asset, and the bodkin, and the two of your own fantastical combat prowess, mm-hmm. you bring down the two Von Mir creations and have them at your mercy. I'm actually going to turn to the Kiwa Swordmaster. Sergeant yeah, I have learned much from my brief time with you. What would you do with such things? My gut tells me that we should kill them, but my head tells me that we should not. If we do not kill them, we take the high ground in the political arena. If we kill them, we show them that we are a force not to be trifled with. It is a difficult choice, as I say. My heart speaks one truth, my head another. I would say that by humbling those strongest constructs, we have shown that they are a force not to be trifled with. Very true. And if there is political gain to be made, then I think both of our houses would prefer that. Of course, he says, an injury sustained during combat could easily be explained. Mm. 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 I kick Mm. one. Casually backhand one with the mouth, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then sort my rose back to look like a Bene Gesserit rather than some sort of feral <laughs> witch, <laughs> leaping off buildings, punching. All right, yeah. bring them in. That'll be humiliating as well. Bring yeah, them in if under you march guards. them in. Oh yeah, the we're palace, gonna leash them and be... march them in. These um, things were being dangerous. We stopped that. If there's Excellent. any unconscious jonglers, we'll be dragging them back in by their heels as well. Excellent. Well played. Right through the front gates. Well, right through some mud. Actually, <laughs> don't find a lot of mud on Arrakis. Don't find a lot of mud Dung? on Arrakis. Um... Meanwhile, Aaron, who's been sat there terribly patiently, waiting for his chance <laughs> to horribly and brutally torture this Taishang, conversate with this Taishang, so Isaac would lean in close and he would have the, the uh, house two dark guards push. kind of holding so this please, guy. Please hold his mouth open. I must carefully inspect to make sure that he does not injure himself before our talk is through. And so they, they, they push his mouth open. Uh, Isaac will, guy, looking inside, you can see that there is there is very definitely a fake tooth. Yeah. So Isaac will very, very precisely remove the fake tooth. As you open his mouth, actually, he, he points at it with his tongue. Like that. Would you like me to remove that so you don't have to kill yourself? Okay. Okay. Uh, L- let him speak for a moment. Sir, please rest assured that this is not a situation under which I would be obligated to take my own life. Well, then perhaps we could have a civil conversation. You see, although I very much dislike being shot, I do understand that actions must be taken from time to time. Perhaps if you can enlighten me as to the purpose of your shot... I will not be forced to take one of my own. Quite understandable, sir. And your noble approach to this is appreciated. This is a purely professional incident. I am a sniper by nature, by training, and I was following a lead on the package. The lead on the package that I had led to you. I took my shot. I was coming down to search you for the package. I can see now that you clearly are not the Harkonnen agent. Clearly, I was misinformed. I see. 
I have heard over the comms in the last few moments, though, that your alliance was already aware of actually where the package was and who was carrying it. So why were you targeting the false trail, even if you knew that it was the false trail? Well, perhaps there may have been some who were informed, but I imagine that was not shared with all. Hmm. Had so, I known the whereabouts of the actual target, we would already have won and this conversation would be unnecessary. So it seems to me that the Taishing were used by the Von Mir as mere bushwhackers we while they well took the glory. Dispute with the Von Mir. I suspect this is more likely a jongler self-aggrandizing oversight rather than von mere treachery hmm. the Your von mere words... are very much junior partners in this arrangement absolutely not let their bravado encourage you to believe they are more than mere lackeys all i meant was to suggest is that they are a minor house and a lackey but by failing to include the Taishing in their plans, you've been relegated to an even lesser role than the Von Mir. That is something I believe you should consider when next you consider your allies. I appreciate your use of non-lethal rounds and I reach down to help him stand up. Isaac pats him down and says, I hope you would not suffer too greatly at our hands, and I look forward to the next time that we're able to have such a civil discussion. So you are a gentleman. I appreciate your candor and civility in this matter, and I do not particularly lament the loss of the rifle. Please tell your man he may keep it with my compliments. Thank you for your graciousness, and please do pass on House Dargusha's thanks to your house for your discretion in this matter. And with that, I'll be Isaac sure will walk away. To do so. And you oh, walk away, and he walks away, and the two Dargush guards are like, what the? Uh, uh? <laughs> Our purpose was much more met in a civil conversation here. Turning is this an enemy against politics, my lord. I, yes, yes, it is. But you did admirably, and I shall let Sergeant Graf know that you responded perfectly to my directives. Thank you, sir. Shall we return to at the which house? point a red firework bursts <laughs> overhead? Looks like somebody's won. Uh, Sir Dela, we're preparing to return to the palace unless you have other orders for me i can only hope that that red flare is for your return to the palace you're certainly welcome to join us at the palace uh your contribution to our victory has been much appreciated i serve the house dargush and i serve you my lord we shall be there presently and you do so exceptionally. Aaron Harkonnen arrives, having been called from his quarters with Fenring and Fenring's wife and his nephew all come out together. And he applauds, bravo, bravo, Sir Daler. Wonderful work, excellently done. Now, do you claim this victory for your own house? <laughs> I'm going to give it to our uh, farming friends. They're the only ones who haven't got a victory so far. But the, <laughs> that poor rugby lad. His name oh, is Billingsley, by him, the way. Slap him on the back, put it in his hand and go, go on, this is your moment. He kind of shuffles forward and like kneels and holds it up to the Harkonnen and says, apologies, my lord Billingsley of House Omara. I brought you the trophy, sir. I hear uh, the Billingsleys are a fine and noble family. <laughs> I'll laugh. Maybe not noble. 
Mm-hmm. They're a family. They're excellent work. Excellent work. By this point, people are starting to file in from the other houses, looking fairly dejected. Yeah, I mean, the keywords are coming in and they've got the strong shoulders of, yeah, we pulled this off honorably. Your own men kind of come in and form up as as they tend to do subtly, and then suddenly there's a lot of them. With our prisoners? Your command team comes in. The Von Mir are looking furious as you drag the two bio sculpts in. I believe these are yours. They're not very good, are they? What is the of this? These are our soldiers. Why have you incap- incapacitated them? Uh, they I think they capacitated tripped. to me. <laughs> it's because you don't know about all the bombs that they planted in their joints. Mm-hmm. <laughs> should take better care of them. They seem to be in need of attention. The Baron laughs and applauds and says, wonderful, wonderful. That will do for now. I think we've all had the opportunity to take a good look at what it is everybody's capable of doing. Wonderful display by all involved. Let's go to our rest after a few drinks, and then tomorrow we'll do the worm hunt. Can um, to it. we maybe make an asset for our gunwork friends? How do you mean? Well, we marched the Von Mir oh, you constructions want to take samples? back. Yeah. <laughs> then they Fair don't enough. need the Von Mir anymore because. So you they can have take us. some samples from their bioscots, yeah? I would think there's probably some on my uh, staff. Pass them along. <laughs> bit with... off of them. Yeah. I think there might be some on Gretchen's Bodkin. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And we'll Although that might just be bogeys. <laughs> with our compliments. It's valid genetic material, it'd be fine. Yeah, it's all good. Okay, everybody good to continue for a little bit longer? We are approaching the Grand Genouement. Worm yeah. punching! Yes. Worm punching. Just checking that nobody has decided that they need to go, nah, sod that, I'm going to bed. I thought the bioscalped, it's all good. Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's go and yeah, punch you. Uh, it's early afternoon here, so I think I can push through for another hour. <laughs> or so, oh, you reckon? You'd be right. Okay, so you sleep for the night, and then the following morning, everybody meets up early. Everybody is still suited up. So everybody's got their still suits on. There's a whole fleet yep. of ornithopters. And it's the command teams of each house that have been invited to go on the worm hunt. The Baron once again greets everybody. He's in uh, a form-fitting Harkonnen design still suit that probably looks like it's not terribly good at dealing with the heat and the dryness of the desert, but looks very good on. Everybody has slight variances in their still suit design. Most of them are of an older model, the similar ones to the shonky ones that you've got for your troops. I'm going to have my jacket of order slung to stand my... ready. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, today marks the culmination of our festival and we shall attend the deep desert by Ornithopter whereupon my troops have been hunting one of the great worms of the deep desert. We shall present it for your entertainment and delight and indeed we shall kill the great worm of the desert and prove the imperium's mastery over this world a lot of the harkonnen troops all like cheer and salute at this point to your ornithopters please and let us begin aaron you're muted Isaac leans into uh, Sir Daler and goes, uh, my lord, based on what uh, we discussed last night and our contact with uh, the smugglers, it may be in our best interest to try to find a way to make sure that this hunt is not successful. They seem to revere the worms. 
I was thinking along similar lines. Should the hunt go awry, it might not be a terrible matter. After all, we maybe owe the Harkonnens a little retribution. I do want to remind you at this point, Millie and Lewis, you both still have your point of determination, mm -hmm. which could be very, very useful. Yes. Just saying. Punching yeah. a worm. Punching a worm. Guaranteed success punching on a punching a worm. A crit. Did we need to send anyone off to meet the Fremen smugglers? Right, Millie, it's over to you for that because you had the meeting. Oh, I've got the meet. Uh, yeah. Um... Your ears are better now. Yeah. Um, the and old your eyesight's lady, come back. Yeah, the old lady was saying we needed to to meet them. Um, oh, that's the point. Having had a chance to look over that beaded necklace, mm -hmm. you realise there's a coded message in it. Oh. It's a set of coordinates. Ooh. Not too far removed from the location for the hunt. Nice. Okay. Well, I will believe we have to make our way to this location lord dayla um perhaps not all of us need go uh if millie wants to punch a worm well, we have the use of our own ornithopter maybe we could send well as... morgan away from the worm i'm not really very good at this diplomacy thing i think i should go and punch a worm I imagine the Fremen do a smile. It's a slap fight between Morgan and Gretchen. <laughs> I want to punch the worm! <laughs> the worm hunt! Yeah. Kinda, but um, I think they have so far shown a bit more reverence for Gretchen. I'm not going to send you away if you really No, no, I will go. Her. I know, I know, I'll go. <laughs> there might be a worm where you are. It's just a little one. Yeah. Just a bit of one. Just punch, punch. And, and just and be like plankton. fish pump. Trouble is, if you punch a sand plankton, it sticks to your hand. <laughs> and then your flesh is not your own. Yeah. And then, and, and then, yeah. That, that and then the next thing you know, you're the emperor for 10,000 years. Yeah. It gets very complicated. Three and a half thousand years, my bad. Yeah, it does get complicated after that. Um, and poor old Wyoming just has to keep coming <laughs> back and back and back. Oh. All right. So anyway, this fleet of ornithopters makes for the desert. Uh, is your ornithopter going to take a detour? Um, and is anybody not going to be on your ornithopter, but it'll be on one of the others? I mean... Can if we do like a cool sort of low over the dunes thing, one of us it could drop. Someone with Prana Bindu could probably drop out. <laughs> yeah. Jump wrong. out and and make Go our wrong. way. Yeah. Yep. And then make our way to Stitch Abbey Cat. Or the co the coordinates at least. Yeah. How do we think we're best sort of trying to? stop well not stop but mess up the worm hunt a bit it depends how this is going to be operated um i believe from our historical knowledge they tend to be attracted by noise so we could either disrupt that noise or Make it happen somewhere else. Yeah, Maybe potentially we could, could use our own ornithopter to make sufficient noise close to the surface to lead it away. But I'm not quite sure how it all works. Um, Isaac, how? What do you remember of Arrakis and its wildlife? Uh, I would say this: whatever we do, we must do it very subtly. It cannot, we cannot be seen to be interfering with the hunt. Let me see what I can remember about the worms. So I suppose that would be an understand and truth. I role? mean, to be fair, you're a mentor yeah. and you're going to Arrakis. You're going to read up on what is known. Now, at this stage in history, not much is known about the worms mm -hmm. by anyone except the know. Fremen. They are known to be creatures that dwell in the deep desert 
the ones that are known about are big, but nothing like the ones from far to the south. There are worms in the desert that get incredibly long. The relationship between worms and spice is unknown, but it is known that the worms are attracted to repetitive noise, uh, particularly the spice harvesters, which is why they have to have carriers ready to come and pick them up at a moment's notice mm. as soon as worm sign is spotted. It is unlikely that if they've managed to attract a worm, you're going to be able to stop them doing anything to it. However, it is also distinctly unlikely that unless it's quite a small worm, that they're going to be able to do anything more than annoy it. Maybe if the entire fleet went weapons hot and used missiles, machine guns, possibly even atomics, you might be able to take down a worm. I but would it's say incredibly unlikely unless every single ship is prepared to commit. I would say, Sir Daylor, if we can subtly pass the word amongst our allies here to perhaps aim poorly when it comes time to engage the worm, the worm itself would most likely be safe if only facing a fraction of the forces allied against it. Well, we can leverage the Gunrooks with the information we have. Uh, the quinoa will probably be, we could convince by pointing out that attacking something from the air that can't fight back because it can't get that there high. There is no honor in will. attacking a well. dumb animal. Yeah. Uh, how vast and how full of teeth it might be. <laughs> Unless one Let's is hunting for a I've, hat, obviously. Yeah. Our farmer friends, their hearts won't necessarily be in it anyway, because it's not really their, their scene. Yeah, we can make that happen. Do we maybe want to try and set up another exchange? Uh... I think you've got channels of communication now. I don't think you need to particularly work hard to yeah, set no, up but whole channels maybe, of communication. Maybe... Uh, try and suggest some kind of uh, officer exchange situation for today that would give us someone on board each each command. Yeah, the others aren't to... completely opposed to this idea. And so you need to decide who's going with who. You've got three allies and three of you. Yeah. Especially if you're dropping off Gretchen. I suppose I'll have to stay on board the Dargouche Ornifopter. But you could welcome bit... representatives of the other yeah, houses on I with would you. accept someone then. So who are you sending Morgan with or who are you sending Isaac with? I think Morgan has the best connection to uh, to the key. Yeah. And Isaac. Isaac does well with the uh, his opposite mentat, and they then are. I can invite uh, yeah the Gunnarok. Uh, well, Clavia is prepared to offer her ornithopter, which is probably the best one here. Oh, well. for you to use. Is she with flying it? Her flying it. Yeah, sure. That that was fun the last time. So, so that's you <laughs> and Theo Mar. No, we'll carpool. You, you you basically you distribute your people around each other so that you're going out yeah. together and you have a bit of a powwow beforehand. Uh, can you, before you go, make a communicate and justice roll? Seems like an odd combo, I know, but you're trying to persuade the others in your little group of the rightness of your cause and suggestion um my communicate and justice is atrocious <laughs> so um what this is what is... happens when you make the not diplomacy guy do diplomacy yeah yeah pretty much I'm the the stab, there's guy. still two points of momentum you could choose one of them what does or you could give me another point of threat? Do 
Determination. You could set one dice to a one, which would give you set a crit. Set one dice automatically to a one, giving yeah. you a free crit and two successes. Yeah. Because this seems like this is... But, it can only, but determination can only be used if you're using a drive uh, with a drive statement that uh, yeah. complies uh, with your drive statement. Yeah, that's oh. true. Oh, okay. But you could but, give me a point of threat for an extra dice. What can I do with my ambition then? Oh, good question. I can't remember ambition. Is that's that how we... that's experience. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. Mm. Really got anything else? It looks like it's threat and momentum are your two avenues. Yeah. Well, I'll burn a momentum to uh, get a third dice because I'm probably going to need it. Fair. We want to buy a fourth one with fret. <laughs> Don't look at Ben. I'm just saying, sure, do it. At, at the moment, yeah. my justice and communicate hey. is nine. Ah, got it. <laughs> do it. Oh, okay, geez. then. This is the end game. Jump. Let's do it. Complications. <laughs> Oh yeah, there you go. we need this alliance to work. If we don't, yeah, if we don't make, it. don't make this alliance I'm work. There is no um, season two. There's no full. Yeah. There's no more story. This ends right. here. You will die and get eaten by a worm. Excellent. As long punch as I'm last, so I can Whereas punch it. If if we all <laughs> accidentally the hit the von Mir and they get eaten by a worm, <laughs> that is the Go optimum outcome. Uh, a 19 and a 13, that's nothing. Oh, an eight and a two, so hey. that's two successes. Yes, two successes. Oh. Phew. So, uh, you convinced the Kiwa that fighting a dumb animal, not great. You convinced the Gunaruks that, um, however much this might be a nice opportunity to showcase their ornithopters and their weapons. Why not showcase the maneuverability rather than the firepower? The Omora didn't really need convincing all that much, fortunately, because they're farmers and they're more interested in the spice than the worms. And actually having some would be nice for them. So you head out into the deep desert with a little conspiracy brewing amongst your four houses. Mm -hmm. And you drop Gretchen off. Are you just dropping her off or making her jump out? I'll jump out. I don't mind. <laughs> if Gretchen wants to drop, jump, no one can stop Gretchen. <laughs> it's a duty and move role for Gretchen then to throw yourself from a moving ornithopter onto right. the sands near your coordinates. Duty and move is 12. No thing. Uh, Better than 50% chance. Yeah, I get one success. There you go. You drop to the sand, you tuck a roll, and you come up spilling sand everywhere. Mm -hmm. And then I unrhythmically dance to the coordinates. Very clever. Uh, there is a small rocky outcropping. It's definitely not big enough for a siege. Okay. But I... it looks like it would be big enough for a small outpost that the Fremen might use between sieges. I I find some shade from the sun. I sit down and I uh, eat the penultimate apricot from the bag we had earlier. <laughs> and wait for somebody to appear. Okay, the rest of you fly out into the desert it looks like the harkonnens have spared no expense that you can see that they've got a number of harkonnen ornithopters flying around out there and that they've got a several of the the things they call thumpers which is just a percussive spike that you dig into the ground that makes a rhythmic noise which is said to attract the worms You see a few patches of desert that are slightly greenish from spice on the surface of the sand. And sometimes they are radioed in to spotters to identify as spice sands. In the distance, you see a harvester doing its job and a carrier 
later in the day flying past with a full harvester a, a full arrakis experience mm. meanwhile gretchen sat where you are in the sun it's very hot very quickly from behind you you hear two sharp claps And a voice calls out, Sayadina. Hmm. I will uh, look around. There is a, a young person, presumably feminine, based on the voice, mm -hmm. standing in a narrow cleft in the rocks leading into the shade. Just come, come into the shade. I will, I will go. she leads you down through the narrow cleft she's wearing like a cotton shift and loose cotton trousers and as you go down into the rocks it gets much cooler really quickly you mm -hmm. can smell water huh. which is is unusual on arrakis yeah like there's a cistern nearby or something there are a couple of fremen mm -hmm. sat around having quiet chats in their own language and they sort of look up at you as you walk past with their blue in blue eyes can i work out what kind of language it it, it is they're using have i already worked out that yes, they're using the, hunt the what because they use like hunting they're like they're referred to as hunting languages when yeah like yeah. jessica and stuff mentions them yeah. in the book so have i have i caught that before or do i need to make a roll you were coming to Arrakis. I think it's not unreasonable for you to have brushed up on that on your way here. Sure. Cool. So yeah, they're, they're, they're sort of muttering to one another in the hunting language. They seem to be being reserved but respectful. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're going, we're going to shiver as soon as she's not looking. Let's take anything. her water and kick her in the system. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool. I will... Um, uh, the The person who's leading me I will give them um, an apricot uh, and say, um, "I'm my apologies. Uh, the The journey here was was not one uh, that I could bring more water, but accept this as a promise for for future uh, payment." The promises of House Dargouche are many and mm. complex, she mm -hmm. says. Come, sit, eat. I will do so. And she, she takes back her hood when you sit down at the table with her. And at that point, I'm going to ask you to make a truth and understand role. Truth and reconciliation. Uh, truth and understand. That's only 10. All right. Mm. Um, um, but I get two fours. Excellent. So that's two successes. You recognise her. You've never met her before, but there is a very strong recognition in her. You know the face structure. You know the bone structure because mm -hmm. you've seen it pretty much every day for the last couple of years. Ooh. This this Fremen girl is a descendant of House Dargouche. Which means that at furthest she is a cousin to Dela. Ooh. Interesting. There is a small plate of food on the table and a, a cup of water, which she pours for you herself. Nice. Do you speak for the house? I believe so. I am Shadi Abikat. I speak for Siege Abikat in this matter. Make no mistake, I am not naive. But I have been entrusted to speak with you and with the House Dargouche. She emphasizes the word mm -hmm. in this matter. Mm hmm. What is it you seek on Arrakis? Oh. 
Most people seek the same. We seek spice. And what is it you offer, Arrakis? Uh, it's been a long time since we were on Arrakis. Needs change? Fast in the desert. What is it you seek from outside of Arrakis? It is good that you are flexible. Nice cutscene. <laughs> Over to <laughs> the ornithopters. And the ornithopters are sort of buzzing around in the deep desert a little bit. It's starting to reach the point where you're looking at, we're going to have to see something soon or we're going to need to turn back. A carryall flies in. Uh, a communicator buzzes over all of the comms. Uh, friends, cousins, good news. The carryall you see flying towards you is the Abelard, named after my own dear father. And she carries refueling supplies, should you need them, for our little jaunt. Also, she can be dispatched to collect up one of the harvesters nearby, should it be necessary. However, if you look to the horizon, equatorially, you will notice that there is a plume of sand rising over the desert. This is what the Fremen call worm sign, which is a splendid indicator that one of their great worms of the desert heads this way. Now we're going to wait here for it around where our thumpers are placed. Soon it should emerge. And when it does, all ships should open fire. We will circle the beast and open fire with all guns and missiles that we can, attempting to destroy the creature. And then we all claim the spoils. Worm teeth for all, a trophy to take home. What kind of hunt is this? Hunters, stand ready. In the background, you can hear a 13-year-old excitedly talking about killing a worm. Do we have oh. secure communications between our yeah. allied ornithopters? Yes. Yeah, we think we do. Possibly. So, so Dela, it's it will be critical that we ensure that uh, we fire true, it would be unfor mm -hmm. and that we make sure that our pilots control our ornithopters correctly. It would be unfortunate if we moved offline and caused someone to accidentally strike at any of the allies or God forbid, our refueling carrier. That would be an Ooh. unfortunate. That would certainly be unfortunate. I hope that, uh, your ornithopter has managed to repair its uh, its malfunctioning weapon systems. Since I think leaving. I think we're good. Well, there I is no malfunctioning weapon system on this ornithopter. This is one of the. Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> I think. I mean. I think we might be good, but I I yeah. do see that. Uh, it would that be Devon unfortunate Miel... if one of the thumpers got hit. Mm. I am reluctant to open fire on a manned vehicle. I hope you understand. No, I would. I am sure that we would never do such a thing. That's we are, we are quite safe. But I would be more concerned that the ornithopter of the von Mir there. I, I would hate for its flight pattern to get disrupted to the point where it accidentally fired at the carrier. Mm. Mm. In order terrible. for that to happen, though, there would need to be some kind of confusion in a nearby flyby in which perhaps another ornithopter was forced to vent its propulsion in their direction, creating some kind of air vortex, uh, you, um, which is possible in the confusion of battles that this sort of thing might occur. But I would warn you that uh, under those circumstances, they could be firing wildly and who knows what they could hit. This is true. It would, uh, I, I am sure that the Von Mir pilots are more than capable of dealing with any accident like that, but it would be a shame if they were put in a situation where they had to try to control themselves. Yeah, that would be awkward for all involved, I imagine. 
Well, I shall just have to hope that all of these other pilots are as competent as me and would not accidentally backflow the air through the ornithopter wings of the Von Meer craft. Although it that does appear to be quite be poorly made. That was my greatest concern. They are... Uh... Perhaps we should stay close to them in order to ensure that um, they are well looked after. Yeah. I, I believe that is a good idea. And then we flash back once again to the inside of the siege mm -hmm. where a meal is happening. Spice rich. You can taste the spice in everything, really. You can smell it in the air. Mm -hmm. You can taste it in the food. Literally everything the Fremen do is laden with the stuff. Yeah. And there are small flatbreads and pastry like things that have got spice paste on them. There's there's enough spice in this meal alone to qualify as a fortune for a minor house. Mm -hmm. She appears to be observing you quite closely. Uh -huh. Remarkably closely, actually, almost to the degree that one of your own sisters might be able to. Oh, OK. And she says, see, Chabacat is not a vocal proponent of overt violence. We are a subtle people and we work in peace and in quiet. We have a contact within the Imperium with whom we are liaising closely on a project of great long-term significance. Well... Um, House Dargouche is, is accustomed to long-term projects. It takes a long time to, to smooth and perfect the art of making lenses and pointing them in precisely the right location. My father, again, she emphasizes the word, mm -hmm. taught me before he passed. Mm-hmm that your people are adept with the use of lenses and glass. Yes. He taught me a few things about the fabrication of glass as well. Mm. And she pulls uh, a lens out on a chain from round her neck. And not be gold. <laughs> <laughs> and shows it to you. It's clearly been made here locally. Mm-hmm. Uh, she says, and the sands of Arrakis produce an interestingly affected glass that could be of great use. The spice in the air, in the sand, it infuses into the glass if treated correctly. And spice infused glass has some interesting properties, particularly to those who have the sight. Hmm. Sometimes the glass does not show what is there. Sometimes it shows what was once there and what might be there. I will, you know, tilt and listen. I will, I will, uh, like Bene Gesserit odd talk, make like the, you know, the hand movement, the fingers for, this is interesting. What else could it be for? I won't say anything, but I'll make the make the conversation because she she's displayed this this awareness. I want to see how like I'll test it, and probe it. Uh, you notice her noticing, and she says, "Forgive me, Sayadina. I do not speak the subtle tongue." As uh, then I'll reply like that is interesting. She noticed it, which yeah. is something. Yeah, that is interesting. Um, so, hmm, like, um, like, I don't think there's any way Gretchen will, will know or will, will be able to work out which Dargush has, you know, had some fun on Arrakis. Um, however, she has a if her father was here and passed, 
Mm -hmm. that suggests that it was more than a generation ago yeah however she is third generation um there is i have a talent called mask of power Mm. um which allows me to set up like might not necessarily be true but um is this your bullshit power this is my bullshit power yeah um, once per scene, you can create an asset at no cost, such as blackmail evidence or an owed favor that will allow you to initiate uh, espionage or intrigue. Um, the asset is a lie, of course. You don't have anything, but your target doesn't know that. Asset is removed once the conflict is over, and if you're defeated, um, the fact you are bluffing is exposed and you suffer additional complications. Um, but I'm willing to roll that dice because, uh, you know, uh, I'm. No guts, no glory. We're no guts, no glory. So what I wanna what, what I wanna suggest is like she knows she knows there is a a, a house dogush relative here, and we're looking for for that. That's why we've come back. We want to come back. We want to meet with our house dogush family, our extended family. Perhaps bring them home eventually. Like no specifics because this is like a a vague mask of power. But should should we be able to prove? and um verify and and that kind of stuff we will offer them all the things that they should be afforded as a as a member of a noble member of house dargush and obviously if if they are a noble part of house dargush that makes the stitch an extent the stitch an extended part of our family which means they will also benefit kind of and imply all that kind of stuff um okay and helping helping them is helping us so them helping us is us help you know that kind of stuff to get yeah, I see what you're going for that kind of stuff and um yeah that's that's what i, I want to use my power of bullshit for because <laughs> i don't know who she is she's got Seems some fair. she's got some dargoosh looking nose but i don't know which one did it no absolutely that's my bullshit that's my bullshit pitch so um um, yeah, well, how will, how will I phrase it? Um, along the lines of, um, communicate and mm-hmm. duty, communicate and faith. Uh, no, I think it'll be duty because understanding is yeah. not, uh, not necessary. Only yeah. obedience. I don't, I don't, you need don't know to un- which one it is and who it is, but you don't care. You know that someone is. Yeah. I know there's a, yeah. there's a, enough of a glimmer of truth that I'll just take that and use it like a horrible dune person um um so i will do that um how important is this to us very very so should i use a momentum yeah this is one of your three main directives in being here and then because i've created this does this asset does that lower any difficulty by one yeah yeah all right so um, three dice, communicate uh, is five, but duty is eight, which gives me a 13. Um, um, so that's two successes on those two. Um, that makes it three successes. Um, but I could make it four by spending a determination because this is duty. Understanding is not necessary, only obedience. We absolutely could. We do want it to succeed, and I think this is probably going to be you one might of the as well spend it now. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah, leaning into the, like I, I don't need to understand the whole picture or any of the picture. In fact, into Dela's endgame. Yeah, it, it's all for, all for House Dargoosh, and therefore the Bene Gesserit in the long run. Um, I will get four successes by spending my determination. And actually, reporting this back to the Bene Gesserit may actually give you another angle to mm-hmm. leverage. Yeah. So your four successes, um, you know, that's spectacular. That's a really, really good success. And she leans back. She appears to be very satisfied with what you're saying. And she says, 70 years ago, a princess went into the desert and she planted a seed. And that seed grew into an apricot tree. The apricot tree bore fruit in time and the fruit fell and stayed in the desert. The princess sadly had to go away. 
she was called home by her father. But the apricot grew and it grew into the form of a handsome young prince. He became a prince of the desert. He was a worm rider, spice gatherer. The prince had a daughter. The daughter grew into a fine young woman, but unfortunately the prince himself was lost. Enemies abound in the desert. They say he fell in a storm of black and red. Hmm. The daughter of the prince swore that she would remain on the sands, but that she would call to the princess in the sky and beg of her to send down what aid she could from her palace in the heavens. That she would send more growing things, that she would send tools and weapons, that she would give the people of the desert what they needed to fight the storm and what they might need to survive after it had passed. Your message is well received and your observation astute. She'll, sm she'll smile, like she can't help it. She's cocky, she'll smile. See Jabby Cat stands with you. Uh, no, we stand with Stitch, Stitch Abbey Cat. Um, I have a lens and I will give it to her. She gives you hers in exchange. Yeah. Um, on a side note, I've heard of these worms of the desert. Do you have any pictures of them? It is not good to take an image of Shai Hulud. Hmm. He is the lord of the wild places, the god of the sands. The fools who seek to hunt him will find themselves hunted in turn. Hmm. True. I just wish I got to see one while I was here. Nevertheless, um, I you should... seek to see a worm. Hmm? Put on your still suit. Let's go. I will laugh and put on my still suit and go. And she picks up these two massive hooks and a big roll of rope. Don's a she looks at your still suit and says, no, take that off. <laughs> take yeah. that off right now. I'll comply. You are not leaving my seat in that. And hands you another still suit that fits much better. Looks a bit shabbier, but is more comfortable and fits better. Mm -hmm. Now you look like a desert rider. She takes you out onto the sands and you can see that there's a device set up nearby that's just got a little hammer rising up and down. Mm -hmm. doom, 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 doom. And you can see a plume of sand in the distance coming closer. Stand back. I will throw the rope down when it is your time. All right. Meanwhile, back over in the hunt, the worm sign vanishes as it gets closer and closer. And then suddenly a circle appears around one of the thumpers of the sand slightly receding. The if our farm friends could take that opportunity to be a bit too reactive and accidentally take out the thumper, that would be useful. It's a bit late for that thumper. That thumper's already been taken out, but it's taken yeah. out as the worm rears up from under the sand. And the worm coming out of the sand, you were not ready for. You were expecting these things to be big, but this worm is not big. It is gargantuan. The circle of its mouth encompasses a vast swathe of the desert as it rears up, opening its threefold mouth, rings of teeth on the inside, bristling and glistening in the sun. The smell of cinnamon in the air is near overpowering this close and it blasts its way up out of the ground, right in between all of the ornithopters. 
the Harkonnen waste no time. They click the weapons hot and open fire immediately, circling the beast, shooting away. The jongler ornithopter fires missiles straight at it, wasting no time at all. Taishen go for height. <laughs> Their ornithopter pulls up sharply as they go for height and then from the side door, a sniper takes a shot with a missile launcher. The missile flies directly into the worm's mouth and explodes inside. It thrashes around. What do you want to do? I'll say over the comms. My god, it's big. That's a sight enough to make any thopter pilot nervous. Mm. I'll tap my pilot on the shoulder and go, it would be a shame now for us to accidentally disrupt the Von Mir's aim. So your two pilots both kind of go <laughs> with just a little kink <laughs> of the control <laughs> mantle. And from your positions, one of you blasts the Von Mir shuttle that way and the other one blast the Von Mir shuttle that way and they go spiralling out of control through the air, firing wildly all around them. Let's see. Oh, that is going to smart. Yay! Who's it going to smart for? Uh, Dela, you need to remain safe. Safe is relevant. Well, grandmother would be most upset with us. You I'm most upset with you. So the Von Mir oh, ship hits the Yash Ornithopter. The Yash Ornithopter also isn't firing. Um, they appear to be heavily equipped with cameras and tracking devices and are mm. trying to record everything Nothing they can. Yet. But as the machine gun fire from the Von Mir shuttle strafes across their bow, the Yash ship starts to plummet down towards the sand. One of the wings of their Ornithopter pockmarked full of holes and they're trying I, to stabilize it as they go down i sort of direct hours down then to rescue them managing this yeah. half fast float down to the ground the worm slams down next to it a cloud of sand flies up on either side of it you're calling your ship into land we i think i'm in the kiwa ship so yeah we can do the honourable thing and try and rescue the Yash. So you drop down towards the sand and you land on the sand. The worm is there now. It's it's several stories high. This thing is to punch it. <laughs> Are you actually going to punch I'm the worm? Actually, well, I'm going to get the Yash on board and then I'm going to go. So while the Yash are getting on board, it. are you going to run over and punch the worm? Go on then. Yes, because I'm never going to get this chance. You're again. never going to get that chance again, are you? <laughs> you may, it may be the last time you get that chance again. It <laughs> may ever. Yeah, this might be the end of Morgan, but gosh, he'll die happy. <laughs> Just a kind of tap, not a full on because this thing's the size of a building, building. <laughs> so if you even if you full on hit it with the mace it doesn't care it no. won't notice i'm not gonna do that it's more kind of just like a respectful to a much superior combatant just boop. nemo touched the butt and well, then i'm gonna get back on the ship bumping the worm yes God, i'm and gonna make you roll bit. for it because i want to see if you get crushed <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, what are we going to call this? I'm going to call this Move and Justice. Why justice? Because everyone deserves a fair go. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That works. <laughs> now an execus says full force punch or it doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm rolling for it, so we can call it full force if you like. Uh, da, 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 that's a success. And that's a complication. Because <laughs> why would it go any other way? Oh, spectacular. <laughs> so you run up and you punch the worm. And as you do, the sand where it's landed is loosened and weakened. And you kind of sink up to your knee <laughs> under the worm. Your foot slides down until you're pinned in place by this worm. So there's a worm on your leg. 
You should have named him Ahab. I might be fine. <laughs> but I was going to try and bump the Vomir towards the carrier, but now I feel like I should buzz the worm to save Graf. No, no, deal with the Vomir. I'll be fine. Uh, okay. Just maybe burst over it at a bit of speed to catch its attention. So you tried to make it turn away from Graf? Yeah. Okay. Uh, make a... God knows what in the living hell this role is, Rob. Uh, faith? <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, I think there's a lot of faith going on I think here. faith and communicate. Faith and communicate. Inspiring faith drives excellence. I mean... You're not inspiring faith right now. I believe. I'm inspiring believe. the pilot to save Graf. There's a worm on me. Save Graf. I believe. Oh, well. I'm loving Eggles because Morgan really needs those legs. How many? Mm two. -hmm. Okay, I'm going to spend two threats. Seems fair. Not to cancel your successes. You do distract the worm. But as it twists and rolls away, it completely mangles Morgan's leg, leaving him with oh. the, the shredded remains of his left leg in the sand, pooling blood around it. A worthy so sacrifice. Master Aki comes darting out of the, the thopter and grabs you under the arms and starts dragging you backwards. Good job Did you, you see made me? Excuse me, I punched the worm! You are a very brave but incredibly stupid man. I accept that. <laughs> the pain is indescribable. Uh, this is like having a skyscraper roll over your leg. And he drags you back on. Ow. Yeah, bump, bump, bump. And they start trying to, like, tourniquet your leg and perform first aid as the pilot pulls back up again. <laughs> I'm going to call over the general channel then. There's a Fopter down. We have a man with a severe injury uh, and a Fopter overburdened. We're going to. A hard code and say, back. retreat then. Get back. Get back. That's pulling, well, two Fopters and one destroyed. That's three off of the line. So they stand no chance of killing it now. And the Von Mir are pretty... <laughs> yeah, the Von Mir, oh, that's a good point. The Von Mir are dangerously out of control. Oh, oh, that's I four. To save them, beep, beep, I, I beep, only beep, have one beep, leg beep, left. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, I wasn't going to save him. I was going to nudge him towards the carrier. <laughs> Never mind the carrier. They, the they've been man. nudged in front of the worm at this point. <laughs> Shai Halud rears up once more. Can he do it? Go on, Shai Halud. I believe. Oh, he does. Shai Halud launches himself up out of the desert once more, opening his maw. And you see the Von Mir shuttle disappear within. So, so sad. As he slams back. back down again. Back now. <laughs> totally worth it. Onto the sand. The Harkonnens come name. over the comms and say, time for a valiant withdrawal, I fear, my friends. Mm -hmm. But wait, what's this? Harkonnen craft to the rescue. And a, a small wing of Harkonnen ships come flying in. Missile launchers flaring, and you can see them impacting on the side of the worm and doing damage. And the worm burrows himself back into the ground. But with a final tail flick, he bats one of the lesser Harkonnen craft out of the air and into the sand where they crash in a little fireball on the desert. <laughs> Meanwhile, back over at Seat, not Seat Jabbercat, but um, the little hidey hole nearby, mm -hmm. it's Shaddy. calls the worm uh, and a, a small worm not the biggest one ever appears up out of the desert and comes towards her and she hooks these two big hooks into the side of its flesh and twists them to open up the scales on the worm and as she does it rotates its body 
to move those scales away from the irritation of the sand into the soft tissues underneath, drawing her upwards to the top of the worm. When she gets there, she lets out this ululation of pure joy and victory, rides off and then comes back around towards you again, flinging the rope down to one side. I, I will run and, and jump on the worm. Go on. Go on. What am I doing? Moving? It's got to be moving power, I think. Oh, I'm not very good at this. I know you're not very good at it, but it's it's the ultimate power move. Yeah. Um, but it's move, and I get to re-roll a dice because it's Prana Bindu. Uh, Prana. I got two threes. Left. I, got, oh, I, I got two correct. threes. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. It was you meant to be. You are a worm rider. Um, you climb up the rope to the side. You didn't do it on your own. You had help, but no. you are a worm rider. And you're stood her. behind her as she directs the worm out into the desert towards where you were dropped off. I'm going to punch the worm. <laughs> <laughs> I just kneel down. I just kneel down and I just do it. I just go bonk. <laughs> <laughs> Done it. And she takes you for a short ride on the worm before <laughs> I think Gretchen beat Morgan at this. Yes, because she's walking away with both of her legs. She's walking away. Walking away. Uh, <clears throat> Don't worry, the house will buy you a new one. Mm -hmm. Hoping. <coughs> this is why I want to have master. Not to fund master. it as well. Yeah. So you ride into the desert and you fly back to Arakeen. Where you meet later mm. in the quarters, the servants have packed up your things. It's time to leave. You've had a couple mm -hmm. of days partying, making contacts. Dealing with a souk are... doctor for yeah. Morgan. Also <laughs> packed up to leave. Gretchen, I punched a worm! Ayla <laughs> has one little last ploy that, well, the, the actual tip of everything we've done um, I'd like to contact Fenring and ask him if he'd be willing to hear a little proposal we have. Always willing to hear a little proposal is Count Fenring. Yeah. Uh, it seems that now that the uh, that Fenring is in charge of of Arrakis and the spice mining that uh one thing that is always a difficult thing to come by in in this kind of operation is manpower and it would seem that the house dargush has a distinctly unique collection of eyes in our case thopters in the gunruk's case and uh harvesters from our good farming friends and a little bit of muscle to ensure that the Imperium receives its required spice. Obviously, Are you suggesting, my friend, that you think that House Targush could be subcontracted as spice harvesters on Arrakis? I think we're in a unique position to offer you what you need for exactly that. A bold suggestion. The Harkonnens are also in the running for this. So let us say that we will give you a territory and we will see how well you manage such a thing. I see great things in your future, Sir Taylor. Your grandmother will be proud. Do please pass on my regards. She is a canny and shrewd lady and has made a very wise choice in sending you to Arrakis. I will certainly pass on your regards. I shall and hope I to see you soon reason. when you come to inspect the holdings that we offer to House Targush in the desert. Certainly. I look forward to it. It has been my pleasure. And I'll leave him with the vase with the last flowers in it for uh, his wife. 
Morgan. What does Morgan want to do to finish up on Arrakis? Lie in a hospital bed and get high no! on painkillers. Pump me full of painkillers and give me a... Well, I've got a staff. I'm going to go see the, the troop. I'm going to hobble. Are the men cheer for you? Shrugged up to the eyeballs. <laughs> Morgan punched the worm. The graph punched the worm. Worm puncher. <laughs> the graph punched the worm. <laughs> you have all done your house proud. Not as proud as Millie has with that little ditty. <laughs> <laughs> Just so that this doesn't get lost for YouTube later. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's yeah, Morgan that. Graf. Punched a worm for a laugh. But he lost his left leg. It's replaced with a peg. But at least now his pants don't chaff. Bubba boom. Preserved <laughs> for all time on the interwebs. Hey. Beautiful. But yes, I would like to acknowledge the troop uh, and speak of how, as Sir Dallas Star rises in House Dargouche, so does his council. And I will have need of good men and women to rise with me to protect the house and the air. They've all done a good job. <laughs> Corporal Wyoming raises a cheer and says, Photograph, Sir Taylor, and House Dargoosh. And all the men go, Dargoosh! Oosh, oosh, oosh. And then I'm going to go sit down and drink some grain spirit with the farm boys. Because <laughs> <laughs> painkillers and booze go so well together. Oh, yes. Aaron. So Isaac would do what Isaac does best. He would disappear, fade into the background, cease to be anything other than a slight memory of someone who passed through the palace as he quietly finds new ways to trouble Von Mir and perhaps try to build a new relationship with the Taisheng. Yes, you've got a contact now within the Taisheng for the guy that you let live. You mm -hmm. have a contact in the Omora who um, respects you and actually found you an engaging and entertaining ally because he finally got to stretch his mental abilities beyond doing farm tabulations. And last but by no means least, Gretchen. Um, How much are you going to report back and to whom? Um, I will tell, I'll tell Dela that he has a relative here. So he may use that how he wants. Um, and obviously I'll explain um the situation um and then i will um meet like meet my uh i i think i agreed with the is it the gunnerex yeah i'm gonna have a fight with the gunnerex um and in the fight at some point like obviously she will she will go in like clean ropes um and she will um at some point like you know elbow so in the face so blood on on the robes like splattered gory gory as sin fight and then yeah. immediately afterwards go and see the reverend mother <laughs> and provide her as much like with a sample yeah uh, and also tell the mother the reverend mother that there are um dargouche on she, she, she looks at the blood and she says uh, you always were a direct woman weren't you Gretchen yes sometimes I despair and other times I celebrate but always you surprise <laughs> um, and I'll ask for something so I don't have to go through the palace in my undershorts yes she gives you a full set of Bene Gesserit robes to make your way back in and so you catch Guild Highliner back home to Darga, the Forest Moon, in Epsilon Eridani. You were fated and celebrated and congratulated. Everybody is terribly impressed, but no one is quite as impressed as Grandmother, who expected you to maybe pull off one of the tasks you were sent to do. But you managed to assassinate the heir 
to House Von Mir. That was forge an alliance accident. with a smuggler clan on Arrakis and make contacts and build your own little web of households in the minor houses to promote the cause of House Dargoosh. She is very, very impressed and not straight away. First, she sends you back to Arrakis as an administrator for your holdings. Then she sends you for a bit more training. Dela very quickly becomes the very clear successor to the house. Whilst mm. your father is still on paper the successor, it's very clear that Grandma has other plans. And before she passes, Dela is elevated to air because by that point, your dad's too old and a bit more useless than he was. He Dela likes becomes painting anyway. Dela becomes air and eventually head of the house. <sighs> Excitement. You become Baron mm. Dela Dargoosh. Hurrah! Dargoosh. <laughs> Morgan's star rises with Dela's after the fitting of a new prosthetic leg. Warmaster Graf. Warmaster Graf eventually takes his place by your side. When the old guard retire or leave following the death of grandmother, your your own star rises with them, War Master Graf and his sidekick, Captain Wyoming. <laughs> and their little troop, the Sand Jackals, which are your special personal honor guard, regarded as special forces amongst the house. Isaac is nobody, nothing important, nothing ever happens. Nobody knows who he is. He does nothing. He very quietly takes on a few extra responsibilities here and there in the background, dealing with, you know, trivial things that nobody needs to know about, the unimportant stuff. He's not even widely acknowledged as the spy master as he becomes it. Selah Arachne is pleased to hand over her responsibilities to him, even as she stays on publicly as the spy master and just stops doing the job. Perfect. Perfect. Gretchen gains regard amongst the Bene Gesserit. Um, young Bene Gesserit girls are sent her way to train in the weirding ways of combat <laughs> and then untrained of all the things that she taught them that they shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. And she rises up to be advisor? Yeah, probably. Envoy? Envoy. Envoy, probably, yeah of the house maybe a little bit of both yeah. so next time we meet house dargoosh it will be with an old man dela as head of the house with these characters as their house sidekicks running the dargoosh in the time of paul muadib and we'll oh. see what changes that brings to the face of arrakis Thank you, players. You guys have been amazing. Oh. Perfect Dune characters. Could not have asked for better. Thank you, audience. You guys have also been amazing. We have burnt through pretty much every groat everyone has. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Tonight. And that is priceless. Hopefully we will return with a season two in the future. There is plenty more up and coming on Garblag Games next week, starting on Monday, on when Monday. we have Spectaculars. Spectacular. Follow the adventures of our buddy cop duo of Victoria Valentine, PI. <laughs> That's Paranormal Investigator. Paranormal. Yeah. Very important. Uh -huh. And eternal justice. Eternal justice. Mild mannered security guard by day. Also fabulous immortal superhero by day and night. <laughs> and night. Justice never no sleeps. No double parking on his watch. <laughs> Tuesday, we have got Coriolis mm -hmm. early on. Mm -hmm. And then later in the evening, we've got American Spectaculars featuring the mighty and fearsome Grendel. No. But this week, Grendel will be taking a week off while he's working on his own ambitions, and you will get introduced to the pulp hero, Agent X. Yeah. yeah, Fantastic stuff. And then on Wednesday, 
we haven't got once upon a time in the old book we've got something else happening i believe lewis no, we've got the last like... episode. <laughs> oh, it is the last episode. I, <laughs> I was going to say, what? Schedules. <laughs> Whatever. Maybe there's something Season else in it. the future. <laughs> there is something else coming up in the future. The last yeah, episode yeah. of Once Upon a Time in the Old World is next Thursday. Season and one. Then... Season one. Season one. Season one. Season break. On Thursday, Millie. Uh, Operation Quiet Catch Part 2. We've just got to the testing facility, the UPP testing facility. Had a fight with a, a working Joe, and now we're going to find out what's going on. Totally not hey, any Joe. aliens there. No what aliens. You, know? uh, you, are, you are becoming <laughs> hysterical. You should take a rest. And hey, next Joe's. Friday, join us for a slightly different cast lineup, maybe, as we delve into second edition Vampire the Masquerade mm. and a fun little shovel head party for the month of July. <laughs> Thank you very much, one and all. We have been Garbler Games. You have many of you also been Garbler Games. And we will see you next week. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye. Cheers. Bye.